Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. It's time for North Platte Post Sports on FM 98.1, AM 1410, and video live stream at NorthPlattePost.com. Today's game brought to you by Sand Hill State Bank, Premier Toyota, Dave's Place Pizza and Wings, CT Computer Services. Today's game also brought to you in part by Shelter Insurance, Great Plains Sports and Therapy, Great Plains Home Care Equipment, Larry's Glass, Bill Summers Ford, the DNN Event Center, Larry's RV, Double Dips, the Fortify Group, CIO Well Strategies, uh, Puro Clean, and North Platte Public Schools. Here's Paxton Gordon. Hey, everybody, welcome here to Grand Island, specifically Ryder Park, as North Platte High School will be taking on Grand Island and the Islanders here today in some uh, Nennis, a, a boys' varsity baseball. I know you Legion fans out there are very well accustomed to this field out here. Again, Ryder Park, home of, of course, the Grand Island Legion team, as well as of course, Grand Island High School here. Yeah, if you are a Legion fan, you remember the absolute barnstormer. That was the 17-inning game that both the North Platte, the FMEO Nationals, as well as you know Grand Island's Legion team played just a year ago. And, well, we're here again today, essentially with both of the Legion teams essentially playing ball here, essentially what it is. Even though it's, again, a high school game, uh, most of these ball players here will be transitioning on to Legion in just 
a couple of, 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 of well, I say a couple of months. It's, it's basically a month away at this point. I can't believe it. The 19th is when North Platte High School and the FNBO Nationals, more specifically, will be beginning their Legion season. As out goes head coach John Byrne to exchange the lineup cards. Bulldogs come into today 6-1 and one on a one-game winning streak, of course, defeating Aurora last week in a 12-2 fashion in just five innings. It was a very... Oh, a controlled game, might I add, here for that game last week. Bulldogs didn't do anything too particularly special in the hitting column. I think they only accrued about four total hits in that ball game, but did come away with a 12-2 victory, playing nice, clean baseball. Again, Aurora, I think, came away with five errors in that game alone, which is, hey, not something you want to be seeing, of course, if you're a head coach of any baseball team. You see more than one or two errors on the side, then things start to get a little nasty, and that's what happened last week for Aurora. Bulldogs against six and one. They were on a uh, about six game, excuse me, five game winning streak before they took on Malcolm, who currently is the leader in Class C baseball. They are nine and one on the year, and Bulldogs went into that Malcolm game. They were tied with Malcolm basically up until the last inning before the wheels just fell off the wagon and they fell in that one to get record their first loss of the season. We'll now be looking to get back on a winning streak, and, and I've talked with a lot of people around the community about the importance of these three games, these Class A games. But before we jump into that, we'll have our national anthem, so we're going to step aside and take a real quick break. we come back, we will have more of our Quick Stop pregame show right here, FM 98.1, and, of course, AM 1410. Save money at the pump at Quick Stop with the Dino Pay app. Dino Pay offers contactless payment using your preferred debit or credit card. The savings add up with 12 cents per gallon and even more on Tuesdays and Thursdays with rollbacks for savings of 15 cents per gallon. Huge savings to Sinclair Dino Pay saving you at the pump. Don't forget Frazzle Gourmet Slushes and for real shakes and smoothies. Gourmet coffee at everyday low prices on your favorite beers. Quick Stop. Are you in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV? Look no further than Bill Summers Ford Honda Nissan Lincoln for your next vehicle. Look online 24-7 at BillSummers.com. Bill Summers is Western Nebraska's leasing headquarters. And they have aggressive financing to get you into the vehicle you've been dreaming of. Check out all the inventory at BillSummers.com anytime. Bill Summers Ford Honda Nissan Lincoln, where families are our business. Highway 83 and Walker Road in North Platte. And online 24-7 at BillSummers.com. Great Plains Health Orthopedics in North Platte is ready to serve you with board-certified orthopedic surgeons and a team of medical professionals who specialize in hip, knee, and shoulder joint replacements and revisions, minor to complex hand injuries, sports medicine for both the serious athlete and the weekend warrior, new and innovative, operative, and non-operative procedures, and work-related injuries. Same week appointments are available. Call Great Plains Health Orthopedics today. Your health is our mission. Great Plains Health. This is the Bulldog Pregame Show from FM 981 and 1410 AM. Presented by Quick Stop. Always open right around the corner. Quick Stop. Welcome back here, Ryder Park, North Platte High School, taking on the 10 and 5 Grand Island. Islanders, North Platte, 6 and 1 on the season here to Day. We'll jump into our Double Dip Size Creamery Star Ting lineup. Double Dip Size Creamery in the Historic Canteen District in North Platte offers 24 plus different flavors of hand dipped ice cream served in a variety of ways. Double Dips also offers homemade waffle cones and bowls alongside homemade fudge and freshly baked desserts. They also have available the ice cream trailer for all your outdoor events. We'll start on the side of Grand Island and the Islanders here to leading off at second base. Ethan Foley gets the leadoff spot with Sam Dinkelman at shortstop. He's the two-hole hitter. Ian Aaron's the center fielder. We've gotten in the three-hole with Gabe Ruiz at first base. Jack Stenson at right field in the five-hole with Ryan Kostler at third base. Gage Cannon, he's behind home plate in the seven hole with Jacob Albers in left field. Designated hitter today is Zen in the sack. He is the nine hole hitter batting last. And then of course the starting pitcher, Ethan Kostler for Grand Island. For North Platte High School, here's their starting lineup as always. Caden Jonasson, he'll be leading off once again in the, in the leadoff position. Jackson Polk at shortstop. He's the two-hole hitter with, of course, Easton Jones on the mound here today. North Platte's best pitcher starting off today's 
double header for the Bulldogs. Landon Greeno at first base with Dean McIntyre behind the home plate bag in the five hole. Connor Stifler will get the start at third base alongside Race Morky in right field. Tyler Townsend's in left and then Ty Hanneborg in second base for the Bulldogs as we are just about to get things rocking and rolling here from Ryder Park, North Platte High School, six and one, taking on Grand Island and the Islanders, who are ten and five. So, here is how this game I think is going to have to play out for North Platte High School. They currently sit middle of the pack right now in terms of power projection points in Class B. They need really, I think, to to potentially get up to that top six and or elevate themselves close to that top six. They have to go either 4-0 and or 3-1 and in these next four games. Of course, the doubleheader here today against Grand Island. Tomorrow, they'll be taking on Kearney at Memorial Park. And then on next Thursday, they'll be traveling to Central City Centura to take a course on Central City Centura, who are 9-2 and on the year in Class C baseball. So if the Bulldogs really want to make that final push towards the upper echelon of Class B and host a district matchup, they're going to need to at least go 3-1 and one or 4-0 and in these next four games. And then that last game of the season is in Aurora. Aurora only has one win on the year so far, so not really expecting a, a too difficult of a time for North Platte down there in Aurora. So Bulldogs still on that trek towards a district host and a potential berth to the NSAA state championship in their first year, or well, at least the tournament in their first year of existence. Again, it's so funny because we can sit here and we look at all these baseball squads that are around the state of Nebraska, and, and a lot of these teams are basically just concoctions of American Legion players that you'll be seeing in the next couple of months. So for North Platte and Grand Island, as well as even Hastings, because some of these guys were with Hastings last year, you know, you're going to be seeing an early preview of what's to come in that system as we are just about to get things underway. Caden Jonasson now up to bat for North Platte High School, batting 700. He's got nine RBIs on the year as well as five, do uh, five doubles. He'll be taking on, of course, Ethan Kostler as his first pitch from Kostler. Just a bit too high up in the zone. It's ball number one to Jonasson. Now, if you are an Ethan Kostler fan this season when it comes to his overall pitching performances for Kostler, let's go take a look here at... All the ERAs on the day. He's 3.89 with a 1-1 one one record in his four innings. Excuse me, in his four appearances so far this season for the junior. That one drill out to left field. It's going quite far away. Jonasson's going to get it back to the fence, and here he goes. He's going to maybe round his way around second. He will. He's going to push it. Oh, he's going to pull back, though, on the brakes and make his way into second for a leadoff double, the sixth double of this season for Caden Jonasson. Just a bit. A little couple more inches and some more power behind it, and we could have been seeing a first home run of the year for North Platte High School. They've come close a couple of times, but another double for Jonasson, and he'll start the Bulldogs off in a really good position already at second base to bring up yet again another excellent hitter this season for North Platte. That is one Jack Polk. Polk hitting 375 this year. Six RBIs to go with his name, along with, I believe, one double. Costler will take a glance on over at Jonasson at second and deliver the pitch in to Polk. That one, fastball, going to sneak its way in for strike number one. And it's an 0-1 count. To one Jackson Polk. Next up on the order, Easton Jones on deck with Landon Greeno in the hole. Costler, long glance at second and delivers. That pitch off speed will once again sneak its way, this time right into the middle of the zone for... The second strike of this at-bat, it's now an 0-2 count with nobody out, and Caden Jonasson at second base here in this top of the first inning. Bulldogs threatening to score right off the rip. Costler, another glance at second. Here comes his 0-2 pitch to Polk. That one fouled down the left field side for Paul, excuse me, for first foul of this game, and will still stay at 0-2. Now, if you're familiar with this ballpark, you'll remember last year for the FNBO Nationals that they both simultaneously had probably one of the greatest games we've ever seen here at this stadium, but also with the most heartbreaking end to their season. After beating Grand Island in the upper bracket in a, I believe, 17-inning game, I hold that the 0-2 is high above the letters for ball number one. One and two the count. They beat Grand Island on a walk-off home run from Blaze Zyler to left field. Though, unfortunately, had their season come to an end, losing the overall tiebreaker to Grand Island. 
in the lower bracket as that ball will just sneak out of the hands of Gage Cannon for another ball. It's two and two the count now to Jack Polk. Wind pushing from right to left at a, a relatively steady pace. Here comes Kossler's 2-2. Two -two. That one looped into left, but it'll fall foul for another foul ball. It's second one of this at-bat, and Jack Polk's really getting his money worth here at this stage early in this game. And, you know, if you've been a, again, a fan of American Legion, you'll know that Ricky Holmes' motto is to get as many pitches in before you get a nice solid hit. That one low in the dirt from Kostler. Ball number two, excuse me, three. It's three and two the count now to Polk. So after an 0-2 start, Jack Polk has worked his way back to a full count now with a potential walk on deck. Kostler gets the sign and another quick glance at second. Kostler fires into Polk. That one fouled off once again. Good at bat here for Jackson Polk. We're currently at six pitches so far. Oh, maybe even more. I think we're probably at seven, seven to eight here. Eight more likely already. Kostler, another 3-2 pitch on the way. That one, oh, just a bit outside for Ethan Kostler, and that is a walk. Jack Polk will take the stroll on over to first. That one just barely missing the bottom corner of the plate. And there's the first walk today for Kostler, and now two runners are on for North Platte, and it's going to be a scary situation for Kostler as both head coach John Byrne as well as Ricky Holm very aggressive on the base pad with the double steal attempt and can't question Ethan Jones' ability with his power. Jones now will square up in the first pitch from Kostler as Going to be outside for ball number one. Of course, Easton Jones, haven't seen him much here in his high school career. Again, dealing with a lot of knee injuries that he suffered. Hitting 375 this year with eight RBIs to go with him and two doubles. As Kostler's now 1-0 pitch will be not thrown as they try to pick off Jonason at second, but he'll get back safely. And just like that, we'll still stay at 1-0 the count. Again, Polk at first. Jonathan at second. Kostler knows what could potentially be coming. As Kostler fires. That one swings and misses there from Easton Jones for strike number one. Now one and one the count. Today's starting pitcher for the Bulldogs. Kostler. Now. Fires in is 1-1. One, one. That one squared up and fouled down the right field side for strike number two. It's 1-2 and two the count now to Easton Jones. Landon Greeno on deck for North Platte High School with Dean McIntyre in the hole. That is the four and five hitters for North Platte High School with Ethan Kostler still on the mound at 14 total pitches in this first inning. The 1-2. That one below the knees there, ball number two. It's two and two the count now to Easton Jones. Bulldogs being very reserved on the base pads here today already. Still Polk and Jonason. Jonason at second, Polk at first. The 2-2 two -two now from Ethan Kostler as he will step off the bag though and put both runners back to their positions on the base pads. And first game of a doubleheader here between these two teams. 10-4 on the year for the Islanders and 6-1 and for the Bulldogs. 2-2, two -two, swung on, square third, base side, gloved up, the tag at third, the throw to first will not be in time as it's Gabe Ruiz who dropped the ball. But an easy tag out at third base as Ryan Kostler gets the force out. So, reach on a fielder's choice will be the side of Easton Jones as he'll make his way on over the first, and Joni will get tagged out easily at third. But other than that, we're still being in a position where we have two runners on the base pads for now. Landon Greeno come up to bat for North Platte High School. That was a slow grounder on over to first. Gloved up by Ruiz, the throw on over to Kostler, and Landon Greeno will be easily... Tagged down with that, there's two down here in this first inning, but that does move 
The batter's up one position. So now we have runners at second and third with two out to now bring up Dean McIntyre, the power bat for the Bulldogs here. McIntyre, 556 on the year. 10 hits, 10 RBIs, and one triple. Costler will have to be very wary of power that Dean McIntyre can hold. But McIntyre also has to play it pretty safe, too, with runners in scoring position. That one skied and drilled out to left field, but onwards comes Albers, and he'll get there and glove it for the third out of this inning. Bulldogs had two runners in scoring position, but they'll come up just a bit short on one hit. We'll now go to the bottom of the first inning with North Platte High School currently at the moment tied up here. 0-0. Zero, zero. Super pumped about Runza. Runza is so sweet. Especially all their desserts. Oh, those are the sweetest. Chocolate, vanilla, and twist ice cream cones, four flavors of shakes, chocolate chip cookies, and ice cream sandwiches. Literally sweet. Oh, I love your enthusiasm. Well, I love Runza. So sweet of you. Come satisfy your sweet tooth. Because from the way we make it to the way it makes you feel, Runza makes it all better. Are you or a loved one in need of medical equipment to improve your quality of life? Look no further than Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment. Their state-of-the-art and affordable medical products are specifically designed to return your independence. From manual and power wheelchairs, mobility scooters, and lift chairs, to walking aids, ramps, hospital beds, and bath safety products. They have everything you need to make your home a comfortable and safe place to live. They can even provide CPAP and BiPAP equipment and supplies, as well as oxygen equipment and supplies. Call Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment today. I'm Jared Remus with Jerry Remus Chevrolet of North Platte. The Bulldogs play here on FM 98.1 and 1410 AM, KOQ AM, North Platte. We've got the keys to your new car. Welcome back here to Ryder Park. It is a 0-0 ball game here in this bottom of the first inning. Again, our half-inning breaks brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortifying Group. And check out Kevin McGann and the Fortifying Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. Easton Jones, the junior's on the mound here today. A 2-0 record in his four appearances for North Platte High School. Again, 2-0 no runs given up earned. He also leads, that's right, he leads the team in strikeouts with 19 on the season for the Bulldogs. Get the start here against Grand Island and the Islanders. Again, 10-5 and five on the year. Probably one of the stronger teams statistically in Class A, but there is sure heck a lot of strong Class A baseball teams here in the state of Nebraska. Thank you to our sponsors here for today's game, Dave's Place Pizza. We need to find out more on 1510 East First, East 4th Street, excuse me. He'll be seeing Ethan Foley here for the first time today. Foley on the year for Grand Island and the Islanders. I pull up his hitting stats here today. Foley hitting 316 with six RBIs and two doubles to his name. We're facing the probably the strongest pitcher on the North Platte side. As Jones will fire his first pitch in. That one's low and in the dirt. Ball number one to Foley. Following Ethan Foley, Sam Dinkelman, and then Ian Ahrens for the Islanders. As Jones will get the sign in from Dean McIntyre, and he'll step off as time was called. Actually going to call that a strike. That next pitch is going to find its way in for strike number two, so a quick already. 0-2 oh, count to... Ethan Foley, as Jones looking for his 20th strikeout of the season. That one is in there for strike number three, and down goes Ethan Foley looking for the first out of this bottom of the first inning, and the first strikeout today for Easton Jones, his 20th of the season. Again, coming back from that knee injury he suffered last year in the first game of the American Legion year, or for essentially one of the practices leading up to the first game of the Legion year. 20 strikeouts and a above 375 batting average. A great start is now at Sam Dinkelman as he'll foul that one to the left field side for strike number one. You know, and, and here's the advantage of North Platte and the schedule they have so far set up. They probably have some of the freshest arms in all of the state of Nebraska they have weeks upon weeks and days upon days off before they are next up pitching. So a lot of their pitching arms don't really get stressed out. They're probably some of the freshest 
in the state as that one's too high for ball one. And then just outside for ball two. So back to back pitches just outside the zone. It's two and one now. Jones, the very nasty fastball, but it sometimes can float out of the zone when he tries to put too much muscle behind it as that one once again skirts the outside part of the plate for now a three and one count to Sam Dinkelman. Jones now is 3-1. That one swung, popped down to left field, but it'll pull foul and out of play for second strike. And now it's a 3-2 count to Sam Dinkelman and the Islanders. One down here in this bottom of the first inning. We're tied nothing, nothing. The lone hit goes towards North Platte with Hayden Jonasson's leadoff double an inning ago. The 3-2. Ooh, that one's just going to be down and away for ball number four and... With that, the first walk of today's game for Easton Jones. Dinkleman at first, and now bringing up Ian Ahrens for the Islanders. He, on their side, has the best batting average. And there's only seven plate appearances. He's batting 500 with three RBIs and a triple to his name. Then after Ahrens on deck, Gabe Ruiz and then Jack Stenson for the Islanders. Dinkleman at first. Jones will take a glance at him. And now... Jones will fire. Another one that's down low, ball number one. On the off speed, 1-0 oh the count. Jones will get the sign from Dean McIntyre, and now here comes his now 1-0, oh, but he'll throw it back over to first, and just in time, Dinkelman will get back. Good pickoff attempt from Easton Jones, the junior almost got Dinkelman as Dinkelman... Little Ancy over at first. Gets a big lead on that last time. Here comes the 1-0. Swing and a miss from Ian Aaron's for strike number one. It's 1-1 one one the count now. Aaron's in left field. Would love to advance the runner Dinkleman to second. 1-1. One, one. It's going to skirt the outside part of the plate but not make its way in. It's 2-1 the count now to Aaron's. Two and one. Jones up to 12 pitches here in this bottom of the first. He'll pick off again Dinkelman, but Dinkelman will get back. And with that, still stay at two and one the count. Jones will once again try to pick off Dinkelman. Knowing the threat then persists with Sam Dinkelman at first base on the year when it comes to base running. Not many stolen bases, only one on the year for Dinkelman is that pitch is down low again. It's ball three to Aaron. So Jones staring down the barrel of back-to-back -back walks. This bottom of the first. That one pops sky high, drifting on over to the catching position as Dean McIntyre gets under it, but can't glove it. And with that, that's a foul ball and now three and two at the count. Almost an easy out for the Bulldogs, but McIntyre got it lost in the sun. Couldn't fully glove it up, so we're at three and two now to Ian Ahrens. First game of a doubleheader for North Platte. Their first doubleheader this year. As Dinkelman, again, still over at first base. Jones gets set. Here comes his... 3-2 pitch on the way, looking for his second strikeout. That one drilled out to right field. It's going, but it's foul. Good contact from Aaron's driving it almost all the way to the fence. But it'll just pull foul, the wind not being able to help it. And it's still a 3-2 and two count for the left fielder. A little bit of luck there for Easton Jones would love to find the second out right here on this pitch. 3-2 is the count once again. Here comes that payoff. Ooh, that one's really tight inside and another walk for Jones. As we now have two runners on the base pads for the Islanders. Dinkleman at second and then Ian Ahrens at first as out comes head coach, well, assistant coach Ricky Holm. So used to saying head coach Ricky Holm with the American Legion systems. But assistant coach Holm having a talk with 
Easton Jones, and more probably specifically setting up the defense here with two runners on and one out, and there is some action, some warm-up action. We're going to be in the bullpen for North Platte High School. Nothing too serious is it. Jordan Yonkers, as well as Easton Geisler, just throwing some pitches around. Just getting an arm ready. Jones, again, trying to remain perfect on the season when it comes to his ERA is yet to court an earned or give up an earned run. And a little bit of a precarious situation with one out here. Sam Dinkelman's at second with Ian Aarons at first, so there is a potential for the double steal from the Islanders. They do have some good speed on the base pads. That first pitch into the first baseman, Ruiz, is down low ball number one. That's the ninth ball thrown by Easton Jones here in this bottom of the first inning. He's up to 16 pitches so far. Jones, now with his 1-0 pitch. That one fouled straight back behind us in the press box for strike number one, one and one the count now. Again, some announcements earlier this year for City of Grand Island. We'll be upgrading some of the amenities here around Ryder Park, already putting in a paved parking lot as that one is swung on and missed by Gabe Ruiz. It's one and two the count now. As Jones looking for his 20th strikeout and maybe to put the Islanders on their last out of the first inning if he can get it here. One and two the count. Jones fires. That one outside. Ball number two was looking to see if Ruiz would swing on a pitch outside the zone, but Ruiz will hold steady, and now we're at a two and two count to the first baseman with two runners on and one out. It's bottom of the first inning. The pitch. That one slowly grounded on over to Stifler at third. He's going to step on the bag, and that'll force out Dinkelman at third, and Ruiz will reach on a fielder's choice. As that's going to bring out Jack Stenson now for the Islanders here. They're down to the last out of this inning. Still have two runners on the base pads. This time it's Aaron's at second and Ruiz at first base for Stenson on the year when it comes to the batting. Oh, hold that thought as here comes a pitch from Jones and skied out to right field. Onwards comes Morky running and it's going to stay fair. So the first run of the game will come home for Grand Island and the Islanders. Off an RBI single that just barely stayed fair on the right field side. And just like that, Grand Island will take the lead here in this ball game, one nothing. And there's the first official earned run that Easton Jones has given up this year. As now coming up to bat the side of Grand Island is again the end lead now. One nothing off their one hit. Ryan Kostler be up to bat. That one skied back behind the press box there for strike number one. One run already on one hit for the Islanders. Northland High School, no runs on one hit. Jack Stenson at first, Gabe Ruiz at third base for Ryan Kostler up to bat. Ryan Kostler on the air hitting 167. He'll drill that out to left field, the gap in left center. It's going to go all the way to the fence line. One run will score. Two runs here will score as Tyler Towns is going to throw it on in. That might be a triple. It's going to get past the glove of Connor Stifler. Not just one, but two runs come across as that is a triple for Ryan Kostler, his first of the year, and on the second hit of the game, it's now 3-0 in favor. For Grand Island, man, oh man, North Platte off to a rough start here in this ball game. Down 3-0 in this first inning. Only giving up two hits, though, so that's a little bit of a of a saving grace right now as that first pitch into the next batter, Gage Gannon, is down low for ball number one. First game of the season where 
Easton Jones will be facing some adversity, and he'll blow that fastball right past Gannon for strike number one. It's 1-1 one one the count with two outs. 3-0 the lead for the Islanders in this bottom of the first inning. As Jones likes what he sees for McIntyre and his 1-1, picking the pace up a little bit. As that's too high up in the zone. It's 2-1 and one now. Following Gannon, Jacob Albers, and then Zenon Sack, the 8 and the 9 hole hitter is still warming up. Easton Geisler and Jordan Yonkers with that one tight in the zone, almost hitting Gannon. But that's ball number 3, so only one runner on the base pad being Ryan, Ryan Kostler at 3rd. Jones, the right-hander, fires. Once more, too high and another walk for Easton Jones and that's now puts another runner on the pads. Being Gage Gannon and now out comes head coach John Byrne going to have a talk with Easton Jones. It's the second time, so we'll probably be having a pitching change for the Bulldogs. And yes, we will be having a pitching change as there's Easton Jones' day coming to an end. Finishes with 28 total pitches, giving up two hits and three total runs as it's Easton Geisler. We now checking in for North Platte High School to pitch today's ball game. So we'll step aside and we'll take a real quick break. We come back, we will give you the stats on one Easton Geisler. When we come back here at FM 98.1, AM 14.10, and as always, video live streaming on NorthPlatPost.com. The Bulldogs trail in this one four, oh, excuse me, three, nothing. PC and Mac checkups at CT Computer Services in North Platte? That's right. Let CT Computer Services diagnose your systems to ensure your hardware integrity, security, and overall PC Mac health are running as they should for a free PC Mac checkup. Stop in at 905 South Willow in North Platte or call 308-534-3628. CT Computer Services, your IT guys since 2005. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch, Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has... Gymnastics? Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Find me, Brent Rogo, at 502 East Francis. Back here to Ryder Park. It's a 3-0 ball game here in the first game of this doubleheader between Grand Island and North Platte High School. We have Easton Geisler now up to pitch for the Bulldogs from one Easton to another. Easton Geisler on the year five and about let's see here with an ERA sitting at 5.25 in his four innings pitched. He has no record on the docket. He'll be in a Pretty precarious situation as there's runners at the corners for Grand Island and the Islanders. It's Ryan Kostler at third and then Gage Gannon on over at first. That first pitch will be in there, but they're going to call a balk on Easton Geisler. will now move each base runner up a position. So there's the balk, the first balk today. As that moves Albers on over, excuse me, Albers at the plate, and they'll move Gage Gannon on over to second now. So another run will come across for Grand Island. They're now up 4 nothing, Only on two hits here in this bottom of the first inning. We're still at two outs as it's a 2-0 and count from Easton Geisler to Jacob Albers. Albers, excuse me, is Geisler trying to get out of this inning without giving up another run? and put the Bulldogs in a 5 nothing hole. That off-speed will just sneak on in for the first strike of this at-bat. It's 2-1 and one now to Jacob Albers. Skysler fires. Ooh, good swing and a miss on a really great pitch from Geisler. It's now 2-2 two and two the count. Geisler with the off-speed that time around got... Albert's swinging. Now here comes the 2-2 pitch 
from Easton Geisler. That one drilled on over to Ty Handeborg at second. He gloves it. And that's how this inning will come to the end for the Islanders. They, though, got four runs across on two hits. No errors on the North Platte side. Bulldogs will come back and see if they can find some momentum offensively again, trailing here 4 nothing in this top of the second inning. When we come back here at the 98-1, and 14 10 in video live streaming, NorthPlatPost.com. Family first. <laughs> My dad used to tell us that all the time. But family first wasn't just something he'd say to us. It was how he lived every day of his life. And it's how I try to live mine, too. At Shelter Insurance, our agents are dedicated to helping provide personalized auto, home, and life protection that puts your family first. See me, Pete Foltz, at 501 South Jeffers for a free insurance review. Where do you go for wings? Dave's Place. Where do you go for pizza? Dave's Place. What about cold drinks, a family atmosphere, and nightly specials? Dave's Place. Hmm, sounds like a sweep for Dave's Place. Pizza made from fresh dough, drink deals, and yes, the best pizza and wings. It's Dave's Place. Dave's Place on East 4th Street or at davesplacenp.com. Order it. Carry out. Door dash. Dave's Place. Whoop, whoop. Welcome back here to Ryder Park. It's currently a 4-0 lead for Grand Island and the Islanders. Four runs on two hits, no errors for the Islanders. No runs on one hit, no errors. Or Plant High School here in this top of the second inning. Our half inning breaks brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. Freshman Connor Stifler now up to bat here for North Platte High School, batting this year 273 with only two RBIs on the docket for Stifler. He'll swing and a miss at the second pitch thrown to him. It's 1-1 one one the count now from Ethan Kostler. After giving up a leadoff double for, uh, to Caden Jonasson, Kostler has been lights out pitching-wise for the Islanders. As Kostler now will fire his 1-1. One, one. Stifler will foul it off for strike number two. It's one and two the count now. To the freshman at who's playing third base today, Connor Stifler. Kostler gets the sign in from Gannon and now fires the one-two pitch. That one swung on and missed on a pitch way up in the zone. It's first strikeout for Kostler today in the first down to the top of the second inning is down goes Stifler swinging, and here comes Race Morky. Morky got the start pitching-wise last time for North Platte High School against Aurora. Gave up two runs in that game, and now here in the seven-hole hitting position, going to create an offensive spark here against Kostler. First pitch in is high upstairs for ball number one. And this is the first real, I want to say first real test, as you can't really scoff at the Malcolm game, but the first dabble for North Platte in Class A baseball. That next pitch from Kostler is upstairs for ball number two. Bulldogs put into Class B this year after announcing their dabble into the baseball endeavors here. The 2-0 pitch. And Offspeed going to sneak in on the upper echelon of the plate for strike number one, two and one. Bulldogs six and one, but really their first foray in a Class A baseball, and they trail so far 4 nothing to the Islanders. That one grounded foul down. Third base side, two and two the count now. They don't have, even though are playing a reduced schedule so far this season in their inaugural season, have played some top tier competition, even if it is Class C ball, Malcolm and Central City Centura, two of the top four players, or two players, top four schools in Class C. So really good competition for North Platte High School is that pitch down low from Ethan Kostler. It's Three and two the count with one out here in this top. The second inning, four nothing lead for the Islanders. Three, two, woo, is just gonna sneak its way outside. As Morky will waltz his way on over to first with a, on the walk, that one just barely squeaking out of the zone. Now here comes Tyler Townsend, the sophomore up to bat. Of course, saw a little bit of action from Tyler Townsend last season for American Legion. and. Here in the varsity squad, some dabbles as well. 
as this year for Tyler Townsend hitting 273 with two RBIs as that one is fouled right back to the netting behind home plate for strike number one. Owen won the count now with one down. On over at first is Race Morkey as Ethan Kostler will wind up and will pitch on over to first to try to pick off Morkey, but won't get anything there. And with that, we'll still own one. Thank you again to our sponsors here for today's game, Sand Hills State Bank. Most give me the brand of banking. Locations in North Platte, Ogallala, Grant, and many more. Head to sandhillstate.com for a full list of services and locations. That off-speed right down the middle for strike number two. It's now an 0-2 count into Tyler Townsend, the left fielder here in today's game. It's Kostler. Once again, a long glance at first. Will now look to deliver his 0-2 pitch and get another strike out here. Here it comes. Off-speed is off the mark. Now it's a 1-2 and two count. Following Tyler Townsend, it'll be Ty Hanneborg, the nine-hole hitter, and then back to the top of the order, Caden Jonason. The only hit on the North Platte docket today is Caden Jonason with his leadoff double. As Kostler now looks to fire into Townsend. That off-speed, ooh, just below the knees. For ball number two, it's two and two the count now. Game one of this doubleheader between Grand Island and the Islanders. Already North Platte down 4-0. Four, four runs, two hits, no errors for the Islanders. The 2-2, two -two, that's high up. Excuse me. The 2-2 two -two is... Now the throw on over to second is going to be safe as... Now we're going to have some confusion as Tyler Townsend thought that was the third... The th <laughs> ball, th ball four, but it's actually ball three. Well, the the, the weird part about this is that's going to actually be recorded as a stolen base for Race Morkey with Ethan Kostler confused on the mound. Morkey just strolled on over to second, and he'll be recorded with a stolen <laughs> stolen base. And that was a runner in scoring position for the Bulldogs. And there is ball number four. Is that one's too high and. On over to first goes Tyler Townsend. A weird, weird section of events right there as now out will come Gage Gannon and the Islanders pitching staff to have a talk with Ethan Kostler now with two runners on the base pads. Race Morkey at second and Tyler Townsend at first and it'll bring up a pretty scary at batter for North Platte High School and again in a really good position for the Bulldogs if they're intending to get something going offensively. It's Ty Hanelborg. Hitting 538 this year for North Platte with six RBIs and three doubles to his name. Is in a prime position to not only advance the runners, but also bring maybe one or two, one or both of them home with Morky at second and Townsend at first. Following Hannah Borg, it's going to be Caden Jonas in the leadoff batter and then Jackson Polk for North Platte. 4-0 game here in this top of the second. Four runs, two hits, no errors for Grand Island. No runs, one hit, no errors for the Bulldogs. As here comes Ty Hanneborg for the first time today facing Ethan Kostler. Kostler up to 34 total pitches. Lance at second as Kostler will fire his first pitch in. Hanneborg looking to bunt, but he'll pull it back. The throw to second. Ooh, is not going to make it in time as Race Morky. Just a very, 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 well, I say very, but a little bit too, I don't think very was the word, but a little bit too far away from second base, but he'll get back in time, and it's 1-0 the count now. It's clear and obvious that with no, with only one out, Bulldogs might want to bunt as that pitch from Costler will sneak in for strike number one. It's 1-1 one one the count now in this top of the second inning. Two runners on, Morky at second, Townsend at first for... The second baseman, Ty Hanneborg, up to bat. Kostler with his 1-1 delivers. That one popped and drilled, but foul down the left field side. And strike number two on a pitch that most certainly would have been foul. Now out to have a discussion with his pitcher is Sam Dinkelman. And back he goes to short. And now it's a 1-2 count to 
Ty Hannibor with one out here in this top of the second inning. Another runner in scoring position for the Bulldogs. 0 for 1 so far with runners in scoring position today. The 1 2. That one popped and drilled the center field. Morky going to look to tag, but it's going to be shallow and then gloved by Jacob Albers in left. And with that, there's two down now in this top of the second inning. Morky was looking to tag up, but the hit was just too shallow. And now here comes Caden Jonason. He again doubled in his first at bat of the day. Would love to get another hit and most certainly bring a run home at second, being Race Morky. Jack Polk on deck with Easton Jones in the hole for North Platte High School. Kostler will now deliver his first pitch into Jonson, and that's going to sneak in around the knees for strike number one. It's so and one the count now to the center fielder. Still action in the bullpen. It's Landon Greeno who's throwing for North Platte High with Jordan Yonkers helping him out. Kostler now will deliver his 0-1 pitch. Off speed will sneak in. Ooh, actually will not sneak in. That one looked like it was a little bit clear as day in, but not that time as... That's going to be a one and one count now into Johnson. Is make that two and one after the miss on that pitch. Two and one. Two down on this top of the second. Townsend at first. Morky at second. Still a four nothing game for Grand Island. Here comes Costler's two one. Off speed is too high again, and it's three and one the count now. Caden Jonason, 43 pitches for Ethan Kostler, 21 balls and 22 strikes. As Jonason looking at a potential walk here in this top of the second as Kostler glances and delivers the 3-1. That fastball is too low and that's a walk for Jonason. And with that, on over, we'll have the bases loaded now with two down to bring up Jack Polk. Polk walked in his first at bat and now has an opportunity with two down to drive a run in, maybe two with the bases loaded and two down. Though it is a force out at any bag, it remains in the infield. Morky at third, Townsend at second, Jonesson at first. First pitch into Polk is right down the center of the barrel for strike number one. Someone won the count now. But still plenty of pitches for the shortstop. No pressure at all with the bases loaded. And two out in the top of the second. Next pitch. Ooh, that one's going to sneak its way in. The outside part of the play, it's 0-2 now. As now things are getting a little dicey. For North Platte is here comes the 0-2 to Jack Polk. That one. Smashed high, driven out to left field. Back at it goes Albers. Still going at the warning tracks, and he'll glove it for out number three and allowed out and another opportunity for the Bulldogs squandered as they couldn't get anything going. No runs on no hits. And we'll now move to the bottom of the second inning. It's a 4 nothing game in favor of Grand Island. We come back here at FM 98.1 AM 14.10. And as always, video live streaming at the North Platte Public Schools prepares all students to be productive, responsible citizens in a safe, caring, supporting learning environment with caring staff, engaging curriculum, clean facilities, and updated technology. You can rely on our schools giving your child the tools they need for a successful future. For more information, including enrollment and career opportunities, visit nppsd.org. North Platte Public Schools. Communicate. Connect. Commit. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch, Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics? Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Ask me, Matthew Musselman, about Shelter Life Insurance coverage options. Welcome back 
geared to Ryder Park, North Platte High School, currently trailing Grand Island and the Islanders 4-0, four runs on two hits, no errors for the Islanders, no runs on one hit, no errors for North Platte High School. Again, our half inning breaks brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. Still on the mound for North Platte High School, Easton Geisler, as Landon Greeno was getting some action earlier in that last half, top of the, excuse me, last half of the inning, which is the top of the second for North Platte High School. It's Zenon Sack now up to bat for Grand Island. They're in this bottom of the second, they got four runs in the bottom of the first and moved Easton Jones, who's the starting pitcher off the mound, and now it's Easton Geisler up to pitch for the Bulldogs. That one's drilled down the left, sil left field side foul. It's 0-2 the count now. This year for Zenon Sack from a hitting perspective, Sack sitting at a 200 average with one RBI on the year. As Geisler fires his 0-2, and it's going to be fouled off. So we'll still stay at 0-2, just barely getting a little bit of that bat on the ball, and we'll still stay at 0-2 now. Geisler almost to his first strikeout today. He fires his 0-2, Easton Geisler does, and that time he'll get the strikeout as down goes Zenon Sack for out number one, and the first strikeout today for Easton Geisler. And on the year for Geisler from a strikeout perspective, Let's take a look here. Geisler now with his fifth strikeout, tied for second on the team with Landon Greeno. We're now back to the top of the order with Ethan Foley. He struck out swinging in his first plate appearance for the Islanders as that ball is just behind Foley for ball number one. McIntyre doing a great job of jumping up from the catcher position and clubbing it. Comes the 1-0 and count to Foley. Swing and a miss. There's strike number one. It's one and one the count now. On deck is Sam Dinkelman and then Ian Ahrens in the hole for Grand Island. This guy, sir, will once again get a good sign from Dean McIntyre and here comes the one one. That one drilled once again. The gap left center field. On comes Jonason. It'll fall right just in between him and Townsend. So going on over fully will get a one-out double. The third hit today for Grand Island. And the Islanders is fully gets on base with another double with his first double today in his now. Third double this year. As it brings up Sam Dinkelman, he walked in his first plate appearance, has Ethan Foley in scoring position at second. With still one down to this bottom of the second inning. Another run could potentially be coming across for the Islanders here, leading 4 0. Geisler steps and fires. Ooh, that pitch is way outside to Dinkelman for ball number one. Aaron's on deck with Gabe Ruiz in the hole. Still no action in the bullpen for North Platte High School. Is here comes the 1-0 from Geisler. Is almost check swung, but ooh, too high above the letters. There's ball number two to Dinkelman. 2-0 two oh the count now from Geisler. As now Easton Geisler will step and fire. It's 2-0. Whoa, that one once again way outside. Second time in the three pitches, it's been way outside the zone. 3-0 and oh with one out and a runner scoring position at second for the Islanders. As Geisler takes a deep breath, his 3-0. Good bounce back as it's going to find its way in the zone for strike one. 3-1 and one the count now. From Easton Geisler into Sam Dinkelman. Four runs, three hits, no errors for the Islanders in this ball game. The 3-1, it's going to be outside ball four, and that's the second walk today for Sam Dinkelman, and now there's two runners on the base pads for Grand Island and the Islanders. Now that brings up Ian Ahrens up to bat. He also walked in his lone plate appearance today. 
Dinkelman at first, Ethan Foley at second, and potentially some steel threats on the base pads for the Islanders. First pitch from Geisler is up and away. Ball number one to Aarons. One ball, no strikes. On deck, Gabe Ruiz and Jack Stenson. Four and five hole hitters for the Islanders. That next pitch from Geisler is upstairs too. It's now 2-0 oh the count is. More action in the bullpen for North Platte High School. I believe that's Jordan Yonkers, senior, getting some warm-up action. As out comes coach, assistant coach Holm to have a talk with Geisler. North Platte again, one of the better pitching staffs this season, statistically having a tough day today. Already given up four runs on three hits. So not a huge barrage of offense from a hitting perspective from the Islanders, but a lot of costly mistakes in terms of pitch placement and walks already on the docket for the Islanders. They lead 4-0 and have two runners on the base pads. Geisler is 2-0. Make that 3-0 now. It's 3-0 with runners at second and first. Dinkleman at first, Foley at second. And a 3-0 count. It could be seeing a bases loaded situation for the Islanders as Easton Geisler delivers. And we are going to see a bases loaded situation as he walks Aarons. That's the second walk today for Ian Aarons. And that brings up Gabe Ruiz. He reached on a fielder's choice in his first at bat in the bottom of the first. And now here in this bottom of the second, on the verge of potentially bringing some runs home to increase the lead. It's 4 nothing already for the Islanders here. This bottom of the second with only one out. He drills that one to the gap in right center field. That one means one run will come home, most certainly two, as Jones will throw it in to Greeno, and two runs come across, an RBI single from Gabe Ruiz as two more runs come across. And that now increases the Islander lead to six to nothing. Six runs on four hits. And all still only one out in this bottom of the second. As now Jack Stenson will come up to bat. He singled to right field in his first plate appearance and could potentially bring another run home for the Islanders. As Geisler fires. That one fouled off the bat, luckily, of Stenson for strike number one. Owen won the count now. So where we're sitting right now in terms of base runner positioning, Ian Aaron's at third base for Grand Island, and Gabe Ruiz at first. Geisler with his 0-1. Going to make that 1-1 one one as Stenson didn't go around. He check swung on that one, and luckily didn't get a strike called. Now, Geisler will look to deliver his 1-1 one one with one out. Oh, another off speed that's too high. It's really been the struggle these last couple of pitches for Geisler as they've all been up, 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 and away. And with that, it's now a 2 and one count to Stenson as Geisler once more will get the sign and fire. Oh, that's that one. Yet again upstairs, ball three, and Stenson staring down the barrel of a walk here. And another walk, the third would be this inning if Geisler can't strike out or at least get the out here. The 3-1, and we'll make that ball four. Third walk of this bottom of the second. I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see head coach John Byrne or Ricky Holm come out and have a talk with Geisler to sub him out, but won't be seeing it. And here comes Ryan Kostler. Kostler tripled in his first at-bat that brought runs home for Grand Island. Now has the bases loaded and only one out. In this bottom of the second inning, as Geisler now will fire into Kostler. That's outside, ball one. One and oh, the count now. A walk will once again guarantee a run, but still put the bases loaded. As the 1 0. Oh, oh, it's once again in the dirt, ball two. It's 2 and 0, oh, the count for Grand Island. 
Six nothing is the lead for the Islanders here to start this double header with North Platte. Skysler will get the sign again. The deliver now is 2-0 pitch. That time it finds the strike zone. Strike number one. It's two and one the count now. Jordan Yonker still warming up in the bullpen for North Platte, really using their arms to good effect. The Bulldogs are probably to the angst of head coach Rick, or head coach John Byrne and assistant coach Ricky Holm is the 2-1. It's going to almost get away from Dean McIntyre, but that's another ball. It's 3-1 and one now. Bulldogs, again, are in the double header, so they would not like to use all of their arms because they'll be playing again tomorrow at noon against Kearney in Kearney. So Yonkers is done warming up, but they would love to find somebody to hold the fort down right now as it's 3-1. and one. The pitch from Geisler. Whew, that one just going to sneak in for... Strike two, it's three and two now, and here's a big, big pitch for Easton Geisler. As it's three and two with one out and a chance to get the second out here. The pitch swung on, but oh, just fouled off by Kostler. So we'll still stay at three and two. This is a big, big, well, hopefully pitch here from Geisler, because if they can get this ending to the second out, that's going to at least put a little bit of relief in the hands of this Bulldog defense. The 3 2. Swing and a miss. Down goes Kostler swinging. And now there's two down here in this bottom of the second to now bring up Gage Gannon. Gannon walked in his first plate appearance for Grand Island, and he has the bases loaded. Aaron's at third, Ruiz at second, and then Jack Stenson at first. As here comes the pitch from Geisler. It's in there. Oh, huh. We're going to say that's outside. My good heavens. From my angle, it looked like it snuck in, but they'll say it's out there. So it's ball one to Gannon, the catcher. As here comes Easton Geisler's 1-0. That's too tight inside. It's 2-0 the count now. So back-to-back -back pitches that just are flirting with the zone. Puts, um, puts Easton Geisler behind the count. It's 2-0 with two down in this bottom of the second inning. Two runs have already come across for Grand Island as the pitch is in. And make that ball three to Gannon. It's now 3-0 the count with no strikes. So it's 3-0. Two down. Geisler will set and delivers 3 0. It's ball number four, and with that, Gannon's going to walk to first, and a run will come across for Grand Island. They're seventh here in this bottom of the second, and out comes head coach Ricky Holm, and that'll indicate that it's going to be the end for Easton Geisler today, and a bit of a disaster for North Platte High School and their pitching staff today is. They've given up so far seven total runs in there. So far only here in this bottom of the second inning. So tough, tough outing for the Bulldogs. And they'll now bring on the senior Jordan Yonkers to see if he can stop the bleeding. And he's put in a very, very precarious situation as there's two outs, thank heavens, but... The bases are still loaded. That's that's the real that's the real Dibby Downer on this one. Is the bases are still loaded, and it's going to bring up Jacob Albers, the next hitter for Grand Island. He line drived out to Ty Hanelborg at second base in his last plate appearance last inning. But the Bulldogs are right now searching for some efficiency or at least somebody to get into a rhythm and stop the bleeding that's going on right now. As it's seven runs on four hits and no errors for Grand Island. No runs on one hit, no errors for the Island, excuse me, for North Platte High School as they are oof, really struggling here to find their momentum at all in this ball game. And, you know, we talked about and uh, we really praised this North Platte pitching staff and how efficient they've been and how lights out they've been all season, but... Right here against probably one of their, I would say their true level of competition because North Platte and basically every other sport is a Class A high school. Only in Class B here this year in their inaugural season. 
right now struggling to find any any momentum and any stopping power against Grand Island. It's currently against 7 nothing, with Jordan Yonkers now up on the mound. He'll be facing Jacob Albers. He's 0 for 1 today. Again, line drived out to Ty Hanneborg at second. The bases are loaded. Gabe Ruiz is at third. Jack Stenson's at second, and Gage Gannon is at first base. There's only three more runs that need to come across the plate for Grand Island to be in run rule territory. And we're only here in the bottom of the second inning. As Yonkers delivers. That pitch is outside for ball number one. Again, we're in a double header here, so North Platte, even though they have a really, really deep, deep, deep roster here on the varsity level, don't want to use all of their arms up. With another game next up. That pitch outside just barely. 2-0 the count now. Quick 2-0 to Albers. Following Jacob Albers, Zenon Sack, and then Ethan Foley. And Sack started off this inning for Grand Island. The 2-0 is now going to be a quick 3-0 as Yonkers struggling to find the strike zone in the first batter he sees. Here comes the 3-0 pitch. That time he finds the mark and there's strike number one to Albers. And just need to get the nerves down. Yonkers does. Three and one with two down. Here he comes. Oh, and that was just too low and outside. Ball four, so another run will come across for the Islanders. And with that up now comes Zenon Sack. Struck out swinging in his first plate appearance. He was the loan out for the Islanders for quite a hefty while in this bottom of the second. But now he comes up with the bases loaded and two down. First pitch. That one's going to sneak in, strike number one. 0-1 the count now to Sack. 8-0 the lead now for Grand Island. And the Islanders, the 0-1 pitch to Sack. That one going to loop into left field to score one run, probably two. Townsend can't hold on to it to throw home. Will not be in time as two runs do come across. And now North Platte is in a... Scary situation as it's an RBI single or two RBI single from Zenon Sack. It's now 10-0, the lead for Grand Island here in this game number one of a doubleheader. As the Bulldogs once again struggling to find any momentum on the pitching aspect of today's game. Albers now at second, Sack at first, and here comes Ethan Foley. He doubled in his second at-bat earlier this inning to really jumpstart the offense for the Islanders. Yonkers' off-speed pitch is in there for strike number one. It's now 0-1 the count. Ten runs on five hits and no errors for, for Grand Island and the Islanders. No runs on one hit, no errors for North Platte High School. Ooh, that fastball is tight inside almost to the face of Ethan Foley for ball number one. One and one the count. as one of the coaches had a word with Foley on a strategy, and two runners on. One in scoring position is Albers at second, as Yonkers' 1-1 is one -one, popped up, but out of the reach of Dean McIntyre, and with that, it's now a one and two count. To Ethan Foley, Foley in one for two, struck out in his first play appearance and doubled in the second. He's down in the hole at the moment on a one and two count. Yonkers looking for that final strike and final out of this inning delivers. That one's too low on the fastball. It's two and two the count now. So I believe the next pitcher on the docket for North Platte High School, if we get to that position, is probably going to be Landon Greeno. Greeno did see some warm-up actions between innings when they were hitting the Bulldogs. Two, two. Pops sky high up into the heavens. Here comes Ty Hanneborg and Jack Polk. But it's going to be gloved by Hanneborg. And that is how this inning will come to an end. Not before six runs come across in four hits. And just like that, it's a 10-0 lead for Grand Island and the Islanders. We come back here to Ryder Park on FM 98.1 and 14 10. And as always, video live streaming, NorthPlatPost.com.
Buying a car, it's not always the most pleasant experience, but it doesn't have to be that way. 23 years, that's how long Premier Toyota has been in North Black community, delivering a car buying experience that's friendly, easy, and fun. Check PremierAutoplex.com first, then stop by your lot at 2600 South Willow Street in North Platte. Come see us, Premier Toyota, for your next new Toyota or pre-owned vehicle. Premier Toyota at PremierAutoplex.com. Nicole is having her favorite runs of salad. The something-something ranch salad. It's the chicken bacon ranch salad. But you can put whatever else you want around it. I'm here for the ranch. I'm with you. Runza's homemade ranch is perfect. It's so good. A classic. It's literally the only reason I like salad. Great point. Come get a salad with your ranch. Try Runza's chicken bacon ranch salad today. Because from the way we make it to the way it makes you feel, Runza makes it all better. Welcome back here to Reiner Park Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. It is a 10-0 ball game here in the top of the third inning. Bulldogs need to get some runs across to not get run ruled. As Grand Island has crested that 10-run mark, Ethan Kostler still on the mound. That pitch going to be right behind. Now new hitter here, Jordan Yonkers. Again, our timeouts brought to you by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. See his new location 621 South Dewey and Yonkers. Yonker this season from the batter's box hitting 357 with two RBIs. As that one is lined foul down the left field side for strike number one, the senior. Getting some good offensive production in for the Bulldogs, and he'll need to continue that here as North Platte's only recorded one hit so far today. That one skied straight up into the sky. Onwards comes a third baseman, Ryan Kostler, and he looks like he won't get the glove as it just falls out of his hand. He almost had it. And with that, second strike of this at-bat following the foul ball. It's two and two with nobody out for Grand Island. Again, this game one of the doubleheader. Ten runs, five hits, no errors for Grand Island. The 2-2 two -two from Kostler. Oh, just a smidge outside there. Ball number three. It's three and two now. No runs on one hit and no errors for North Platte High School. Again, they play again here at the conclusion of this game, the doubleheader, and then tomorrow in Kearney at 12 o'clock. That one chipped foul once again down the third base side from Jordan Yonkers. So we'll still stay at Three and two the count as he'll step into the batter's box once again. Landing Greeno on deck with Dean McIntyre in the hole. It's three, two. Whoa, it's way up and close to the head of Yonkers. And that'll be a walk for the new pitcher on the mound for the Bulldogs. As he'll make his way over to first and now bring it up Landing Greeno. Greeno, once again, he's 0 for 1 today. Grounded out to Ethan Foley at second. Jimmy to first with Gabe Ruiz. And now would like to see if he can be the spark plug for this Bulldogs offense as he'll receive Costler's pitch. That's outside ball number one. It's now 1-0 the count now. Yonkers at first. Greeno up to bat. McIntyre on deck with Connor Stifler in the hole. As Ethan Costler gets the sign and delivers his 1-0. Make that one and one with a good bounce back pitch in the zone. One and one with nobody out. Jordan Yonkers on over. At first base. That one skied straight up, drifting on over to second. Dinkelman gets under it. And he gets there and gloves it for out number one. It's now one down here in this top of the third inning. Now up to bat comes Dean McIntyre following the pop out from Landon Greeno. 0 for 1, a fly out to the left fielder Jacob Albers was McIntyre's first at bat. Yonkers is still hovering on over at first base. 10-0 lead for Grand Island. The first pitch, that's in there. Strike number one to the catcher, McIntyre. 
It's now 0-1 the count now. As Kossler gets the sign from Gannon and delivers again. That's high up, ball number one. Oops, wrong button. That's ball number one. It's 1-1 one one the count now. With one runner on base being Jordan Yonkers at first. Check swing, but that's low and away. Ball two, it's two and one the count now. On over at first, still again, Yonkers. One out in this top of the third. Kostler gets the sign from Gannon. He likes and fires again. That's down low, ball three. So Bulldogs now could be on the receiving end of some help in the walks department here as Ethan Kostler's on his 61st pitch and now is a 3-1 count against McIntyre. As he sets and delivers the 3-1. That one grounded on over to Ryan Kostler at third. He drops it and one other run gets on following the mistake from Ryan Kostler, which probably and most certainly would have been an easy out at first. So it should be an error from Kostler. And with that, on over McIntyre gets reaching on the first error of today's game. As there's now two runners on the base pads with one down, and Connor Stifler is up to bat. He struck out swinging in his first plate appearance for the Bulldogs against Ethan Kostler. Yonkers at second, McIntyre at first. Stifler going to find the second hit today. That one swung on and missed by the freshman. Strike number one. 0-1 oh, the count with one down in this top of the third. 10-run lead for Grand Island. It's 10-0 the score. Four runs in the first for the Islanders and then six in the second. As Kostler steps and delivers his 0-1. Ooh, that's now 0-2 high up, but it'll sneak in in the corner. 0-2 oh, the count now to the third baseman, Stifler. Race Morky's on deck with Tyler Townsend in the hole. North Platte High School here in this top of the third, trailing 10-0. Ethan Kostler with now his 65th pitch on the way. Now it's going to be for a ball, the first ball of this at-bat, one and two now. Bulldogs six and one on the year, sit around the middle of the pack, I believe 41 power points right now. So they wouldn't be hosting a district, but Definitely need these next couple of games to go their way as Ethan Kostler's next pitch is once again outside on the fastball, two and two. I can talk with head coach John Byrne in our post-game show, our quick stop post-game show last time out and about the importance of that, you know, home district game that they would love to host, but sure do got some work to do and some power points to pick up as that one swung on and missed by Stifler. Strike number three in the second out of this inning is... Down he goes, swinging for the second time today. And now brings up to the plate, Race Morky. He walked in his first plate appearance for North Platte High School and has an opportunity to once again drive another runner home for North Platte. So far, 0 for 3. And there's runners in scoring positions. Knockers at second for the Bulldogs. The fit from Kostler is high upstairs, ball number one. And in this doubleheader, the Bulldogs will play Grand Island again at the conclusion of this game. They'll play Corny tomorrow, another strong Class A team. And then Central City Centura, who's 9-2 and two on the year, as Ethan Kostler's next pitch is finding the mark in the zone, 1-1. One and one. Two outs here in this top of the third, a 10-0 lead. Tyler Townsend's on deck with Ty Handelborg in the hole for the Bulldogs. 1-1, one, one. swing, and a miss from Morky. One and two the count now, so the Bulldogs once again trending in the direction of not being able to score the runner in scoring position at second. This time Jordan Yonkers is there. One and two as Ethan Kostler will now fire into Morky. Swing and a miss, strike three. Down goes Morky, and that's how this inning comes to an end. The Bulldogs had an opportunity to bring a run home, but couldn't find that momentum, and they now will go to the bottom of the third inning, trailing 10 nothing. We come back here at FM 98.1, AM 14.10, and as always, video live streaming on NorthPlatPost.com. 
Are you or a loved one in need of medical equipment to improve your quality of life? Look no further than Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment. Their state-of-the-art and affordable medical products are specifically designed to return your independence. From manual and power wheelchairs, mobility scooters, and lift chairs, to walking aids, ramps, hospital beds, and bath safety products. They have everything you need to make your home a comfortable and safe place to live. They can even provide CPAP and BiPAP equipment and supplies, as well as oxygen equipment and supplies. Call Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment today. Family first. (laughs) My dad used to tell us that all the time. But family first wasn't just something he'd say to us. It was how he lived every day of his life. And it's how I try to live mine, too. At Shelter Insurance, our agents are dedicated to helping provide personalized auto, home, and life protection that puts your family first. Find me, Brent Rogo, at 502 East Francis. Welcome back here to Ryder Park, and you know, I might as well just call it the Ryder Park curse here for, for any North Platte squad, as currently it's 10 nothing in favor of Granon and the Islanders. Ryder Park has not played really any favors for any North Platte squad, whether it be the Bulldogs here today or the FMBO Nationals in their last couple of seasons. Again, 10 runs on five hits, one error on the side of Grand Island, no runs on one hit, no errors for North Platte High School. Bulldogs six and one, Islanders ten and five on the season. As I in our half inning breaks are as always brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. You can check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group at his location, six twenty one South Dewey, Sweet B. As it's going to be Sam Dinkelman will be coming up to bat here in this bottom of the thirties, yet to record a statistic. He's zero for zero today with two walks. Following Dinkelman, Ian Ahrens, and then Gabe Ruiz for the Islanders as they'll be facing Jordan Yonkers here on the mound. That one's skied up to left field, but still for trying to get to it, but he'll pull up and say no as that's fouled off. Strike number one, the shortstop for Grand Island. Up to bat now as he's 0 for 1 with nobody out here. As this is Yonkers now first true appearance of an inning as he came in relief effort for Easton Geisler. As that pitch is outside for ball number one. A one and one the count to Dinkelman. As here comes the next one from Mr. Yonkers. Ooh, that off speed just dips a little too low below the zone. It's now two and one the count. And it's you're crossing your fingers that a, a Bulldog pitcher can finally find some momentum in the zone. As all day today they have struggled, and that one will find the mark. It's now Two and two the count to the shortstop, Dinkelman. And maybe this is the inning for Yonkers. The 2-2. Drilled into right field for a base hit. I had to open my big fat mouth, and there goes a base hit for the Islanders. As Sam Dinkelman will make his way on over to first with a leadoff single for Grand Island, and now it's Ian Ahrens who's up to bat. Aaron's today, just like Sam Dinkelman, has walked in both of his previous at-bats. He's 0 for 0 today. Dinkelman won the stolen base already this year in his five appearances. Can potentially get one another one here as that first pitch from Yonkers is down low for ball number one. And you can probably hear maybe super loudly in the head of, of assistant coach and head coach John Byrne and Ricky Holm to see if Yonkers can just make it through this inning. And then some as Bulldogs have just struggled to really find any momentum on the mound here today. It's 2-0 the count now. Seems very antsy. Pitchers are today as the 2-0 popped up. And it'll drive itself out of play foul down the third base side. You know, we talked with, as stated, Coach Byrne last week about what he thought the keys were to this game today, and that was a week ago. He talked about, again, some more improved base running. Well, the Bulldogs haven't been able to convert on that base running if they can't get anyone on the base pads. And really to pick up on the pitching aspect, that one skied into the air, and it will not be gloved by McIntyre. As once again, the transition from Sun to the dark in the way the Ryder Park configuration is set 
me and him lose the ball. And with that, it's now strike number two with a foul ball in hand to Ian Aarons, the left fielder. Or excuse me, Aaron Aarons, excuse me. Two and two the count now as Yonkers fires. That one popped up in the gap in left center field again. It gets past Tyler Townsend. will roll all the way to the fence line, and that'll probably score another run as that's going to be a no-out double from one Ian Aarons. And with that, another run comes home for Grand Island and the Islanders. It's now 11 nothing here. 11 runs on seven hits for Grand Island. No runs on one hit. No errors for Mark Platt High School. As up to bat comes Gabe Ruiz. He's one for two today. Reached on a fielder's choice in his very first plate appearance for the Islanders and singled in his last. As that first pitch is going to bounce off of Ruiz. And with that, on over to first goes Gabe Ruiz. And now there's two runners on for the Islanders. And still nobody out here in this bottom of the third inning. As it's Jack Stinson up to bat. He was single in his first at bat, but walked in his second. He's one for one today. As actually we're going to have a pinch hitter coming in. It's going to be Jackson Nesvara who will be batting for Grand Island. Of course, you know Jackson Nesvara from the Hastings Legion team if you followed the FMBO Nationals a lot. Nesvara going to get his first action today with, again, Ian Aarons at second and Gabe Ruiz at first. And that pitch from Jordan Yonkers will find the zone for strike number one. It's 0-1 with still nobody out here in this bottom of the third inning. Yonkers delivers. Wow, it's going to bounce away from Dean McIntyre, and that's going to advance both runners on up. One base pad, and there's now runners in scoring positions at third and second now with nobody out. So there's... One and one count, runners at third, Ian Aarons and Gabe Ruiz at second for Jackson Nesvara. 11-0 lead for Grand Island. Here comes Yonkers, 1-1. One, one. It's down to the dirt, ball two. It's now two and one the count to Nesvara. On deck, Ryan Kostler and Gage Gannon pending. As again, they could see some pinch hitters and some position changes coming around here. Sky straight up. Onwards, going to call for it, is Landon Greeno, and he'll glove it at first, and with that, the first out of this inning as down goes Jackson Nesvara. To get the first out of this inning, North Platte High School well needed out for the Bulldogs, because they are going to need some momentum and some help to go their way as up comes Ryan Costler, tripled in his first at-bat to bring some runs home for Grand Island, and then struck out swinging in his second at bat. Is that one going to find the zone from Jordan Yonkers? He's finally starting to find a little bit of comfort on the mound. Owen won the count with one down in this bottom of the third inning. Runners again and still in scoring position at third as well as second. Is that pitch going to be batted on over to Connor Stifler? He couldn't hold on to it, so... The runner's going to reach with an infield single. So with that, the eighth hit today for Grand Island. And with that, the bases are now loaded for Grand Island. As it's Gage Gannon coming up to bat with one runner out. Excuse me, one out. One run will score. Potentially two runs will score as here comes Ruiz home. Uh oh, the throw to first. Is it going to be in time? So now, Gage Gannon in the first. He got caught up potentially in a overextending, but he'll get back home. And when that RBI single, two runs are going to come home for the Islanders. As Jacob Albers... Now comes up to bat for Grand Island. Ninth hit today, and now the 13th one for Grand Island is, is a courtesy runner at first base for Grand Island. They get a number on him when I see it. But up to bat now comes Jacob Albers. He's 0 for 1. He line drived out to Ty Hanneborg in his first at bat, then walked in his second. 
as Yonkers fires. That one is tight inside, almost hitting Albers for ball number one. As on over at first. I believe it's Trevor Plank. Over at first. As that next pitch from Yonkers will find the strike zone for strike number one. Runners at second and first. Grand Island leading 13 nothing. Check swing. Oh, and it's just a smidge outside. It's ball two. Two and one the count now. So it is Verplank on over at first. So Costler, Ryan Costler at second and Verplank at first. The pitch. Oh, what's more, too low. Three and one the count now from Jordan Yonkers to Jacob Albers with only one out here in this bottom of the third inning. As he'll glance at second and deliver. That's outside and most certainly will be ball four and another walk for the Bulldogs as... Moving on over goes Albers, and it's Zen and Sack now up to bat as out comes Dean McIntyre to have a talk with his senior pitcher, Jordan Yonkers. As Zen and Sack is now up to bat, he struck out swinging in his first plate appearance for Grand Island and then singled into left field on his second. As, and this is only just game one of the doubleheader between these two teams. Bulldogs trailing 13 to nothing. As Sack gets into the batter's box and Yonkers will fire away. Oh, that's going to bounce off of Zen and Sack. And just like that, another run will come across following the hit by a pitch. It's now 14 0 as Zen and Sack makes his way to first. And now that brings up to bat should be Ethan Foley for Grand Island. As here he comes, he's one for three today. Struck out looking in his first plate appearance. Doubled in his second to the gap in left center and then flew out to Ty Hanneborg in his third at bat. Once again has the bases loaded. Trent Verplank at third. Jacob Albers at second and Zenon Sack at first as there is going to look to be some action in the bullpen for North Platte High School. As warming up for North Platte, Gabe, Gabe Moreno. The Bulldogs, that one is rocketed foul down the third base side. For strike number one, it's a one and one count to Foley. Moreno warming up the senior for the Bulldogs, looking to get some pitching action in. As it looks like either Jack Polk or Green will be pitching in the next game as that pitch from Yonkers is low and away for ball two. It's two and one the count now. Here in this bottom of the third inning, Still commanding lead for Grand Island, 14-0 as the pitch. Foul back to the netting. Strike number two, it's two and two the count now for Ethan Foley. Jordan Yonkers digging for his second out of this inning. She Yonkers shakes off a sign from McIntyre, two specifically, and now finds the one he likes. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Slowly grounded foul, so we'll still stay at two and two the count. Thank you again to our sponsors here for today's game, CT Computer Services, your IT guy since 2005. As well as our other sponsor here, Premier Toyota. Premier Toyota just south of I-80 in North Platte invites you to stop out, take a test drive of all their new, used, and pre-owned vehicles here today. Premier Toyota, let's go places. That one skied, but pulled the foul down the left field side, and we'll still stay at two and two the count. 14 runs on eight hits for Grand Island in today's game alongside one error. Compared to no runs, one hit, one error inside of North Plant High School. Here comes the two-two. Oh, that one popped up. Slowly drifting foul as Tyler Townsend just cannot barely get there in time. And another foul ball. It's the fourth foul ball in a row. For Ethan Foley. Following Ethan Foley, Sam Dinkelman, then Ian Ahrens, I believe it was Dinkelman that led off this inning for Grand Island. As on the base pads, 
Right now, still loaded, Trent Verplank at third, Albers at second, and Sack at first. Here comes again the 2-2. Two -two. That's low in the dirt for ball three. Three and two the count now. You would hate to see a walk here from Yonkers after getting up 0-2 in the count. Really needs to dig in and find some something here. He likes to sign. Here comes the 3-2. Oh, sweet heavens, that's another walk as that one's low in the dirt. Ball four, and another run comes home for the Islanders as here comes Sam Dinkelman up to bat. He's walked two times today, and he singled in his last plate appearance. With the bases loaded, could bring more runs across for Grand Island as they lead this one now 15 to nothing. Been a tough day for the Bulldogs pitching staff as Yonkers will deliver. Still nobody out. That one to get way out of the reach of Dean McIntyre to the backstop, but the runners won't advance. So there's ball number one from Jordan Yonkers. Still one out in this bottom of the third inning. That's really been the the one of the, the problems here today for the Bulldogs. If there's been two main highlights here. The one has been the the struggle of getting the ball into the zone to begin with. As I say, that one falls right into the zone for strike number one, you know. <laughs> well, and also it's been the, the walks that have been the problem. And of course, those two go hand in hand with each other. As the pitch from Yonkers will be oh, just out, just barely outside for ball two. Two and one the count now. You know, the Bulldogs just been oh so close to getting outs. And, and that's really been the struggle. Their third struggle has just been trying to find an out. Sometimes it's been the last out as that's outside ball three. It's three and one the count now to Sam Dinkelman as Jordan Yonkers still searching, 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 searching for any momentum. Pitch, make that ball four, and another RBI walk will come across for Grand Island. Now 16-0 as out comes head coach Ricky Holman. Most certainly that'll do it for Jordan Yonkers here today as here comes Gabe Moreno now up to bat. For North, or excuse me, up to pitch for North Platte High School as the Bulldogs are really digging deep into their bullpen here today. Trying to find some momentum, and that's really been the struggle today on the mound is there's been no pitcher that Coach Holm and head coach John Byrne have brought out to really find any, any type of momentum. Easton Jones, you know, had a good first couple of pitches, and then... Really, it just started to stumble away from him. And then after that, Easton Geisler in relief had a good way to end that bottom of the first inning, then struggled in the bottom of the second. And they brought on Jordan Yonkers, and he was able to, you know, hold it together for a fair bit. And then it all, once again, when they got to the bottom of the third here, stumble away again. And now it's Gabriel Moreno up to pitch to see if maybe this time... The, the Bulldogs will be able to find some sort of momentum from the mound. Again, uh, head coach Ricky Holm not looking to bring too many pitchers into the fold because, again, you have a game immediately after this one, and then you have a game tomorrow at noon against Corny. So Coach Holm really trying his, he and Ch Coach John Byrne trying to, find something something that'll stick against the wall when it comes to the pitching here because again I, I, if I'm reading into their ideas is you know Landon Greeno and Jack Polk will be the pitchers next game and you know coach is trying so hard not to reach into that that too deep of a bullpen because they are running out of arms because again this is even though this is a double header here today, the juniors are off here also in Grand Island, so they are a little bit shorter in a roster spot. The Bulldogs are. And there's always the option of, you know, we've seen a lot of, of Jack Polk, Easton Jones, Landon Greeno, but somebody who could come in if if so called upon, and we've seen it last season for the FNBO Nationals, you know, Joni, Caden Jones in center fielder can come out and pitch in some Spot relief efforts. We haven't really seen Joni too much this year on the mound. 
stapled center fielder for the Bulldogs. Is now up to bat. For Grand Island. Supposed to be. Aaron's is will have a pinch hitter coming in. That's going to be Barrett Obermiller for Grand Island. Again, still bases loaded as Moreno will find two quick strikes into Obermiller. The base is loaded. Zenon Sack at third, Foley at second, and Dinkleman at first. As the pitch from Moreno. That one's low. It's going to skip away from McIntyre, but not far enough to advance a runner. But it's a one and two count now to Barrett Obermiller as Gabriel Moreno gets set to fire in now his one two pitch. Here it comes. Off speed is going to bounce off the elbow of Obermiller. It was looking like a good pitching section for the Bulldogs, and then. Immediately it all falls apart as Obermiller will make his way to first and yet again another run comes across. It's now 17-0 in favor of Grand Island and the Islanders. As Edgar Hernandez comes up to bat now for Grand Island. Hernandez pinch hitting as that one's going to be swung on and missed for strike number one. Jackson Nesvara in the hole for Grand Island. And then Ryan Kostler, we could be seeing another pinch hitter for Grand Island. 17-0 the lead. That 0-1 is now a 1-1 as Gabe Moreno will put it in the dirt. Ball one. One and one with still only one out here in this bottom of the third inning. As Moreno's pitch. Once again in the dirt. Ball two. I think the... The thing also about this game is the Bulldogs have really been unable to put balls into play for their defenders to make a play on them. As here comes the 2-1. Swung on, foul down the third base side. And there's foul ball number one of this at bat. It's 2-2 two two the count now. And so really the Bulldogs just a lot of their struggles in today's game can just be attributed to a poor pitching performance from a lot of the pitchers they've thrown out here today. And that's really cost the team in run production. That one is once again fouled down the third base side from Edgar Hernandez for still a two and two count. Base is still loaded. It's Foley at third, Dinkleman at second, and then Obermiller at first. The two two. Boy, oh, that one just a bit too high. It's now ball three. You know, when you see this 3-2 and two count, the Bulldogs today have been unsuccessful in getting the final strikes. As I say that, the 3-2. That one lofted on over to short. Oh, the second, but it's going to get out of the hands of Ty Hanneborg. So one run will score, and then two runs. A so sloppy play on the defensive side when the Bulldogs finally had an opportunity to potentially turn two and end the inning. Turns into disaster as an error happens out at short and second that then allows two more runs to come across. And now here comes Jackson Nesvara and it's a 19-0 game here as that one slowly grounded over to Polk. He gloves it. The throw will not be made in time to first and with It's going to be a long drive home when we get to that point. As, you know, we are still here in this first game. And we're still in the bottom of the third. And we still only have one out as Ryan Kostler now comes up to bat. He's two for three today. He is on cycle watch at the moment as that one's too tight and signed for ball number one. Tripled in his first plate appearance. Singled in his second. All he needs is a double and a home run to complete the cycle. But so far, it's a 20-0 game. That one slowly grounded on over to Stifler. The throw to second, and the throw to first will not be even attempted, but we'll get the easy tag out at second. Good glove from third baseman Stifler. As now, here comes another pinch hitter as it's Trent Verplank 
will be up to bat. And with finally two out here in this inning for North Platte High School as Gabe Moreno's on the mound. So he'll take a step and deliver his first pitch into Verplank. Slowly grounded to Stifler at third. He gloves it. The throw to first is going to be in time. And just like that, finally, after giving up more than 10 runs, excuse me, well, 10 runs exactly in the third inning, we now will finally make our way to the top of the fourth as the Bulldogs now trail in this one 20 to nothing. We'll step aside and we'll take a real quick break. We come back. Bulldogs top of the fourth inning. We come back here, FM 98.1, AM 1410. And as always, video live streaming on North Platte Post. Com. Whether you're a weekend warrior, youth, or professional athlete, the Great Plains Health Sports Medicine Team has you covered. The team includes orthopedic surgeons, athletic trainers, and other healthcare specialists who spend their time at local high school and college sporting events, ensuring that athletes stay as injury-free as possible. In the event of an injury, the team remains committed to returning athletes to competition as quickly and safely as possible. Contact the Great Plains Health Sports Medicine Team by calling 308-568-7456. Free PC and Mac checkups at CT Computer Services in North Platte? That's right. Let CT Computer Services diagnose your systems to ensure your hardware integrity, security, and overall PC Mac health are running as they should. For a free PC Mac checkup, stop in at 905 South Willow in North Platte or call 308-534-3628. CT Computer Services, your IT guys since 2005. Welcome back here to Ryder Park, North Platte High School, currently trailing in this one 20 to nothing. Boy, howdy, it's been quite a uh, first game of this doubleheader for the Bulldogs. 20 hit, 20 runs on nine hits and one error for the side of Grand Island and the Islanders. No runs on one hit and now two official errors on the side of North Platte High School. Our timeouts and, of course, our... Intermissions between the hat between the innings brought to you in part by Kevin McGann of the Fortify Group. And check out Kevin McGann of the Fortify Group, his location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. Tyler Townsend is now up to bat for North Platte High School. He's walked in his lone plate appearance today. He'll be facing a new pitcher in Zachary Mater. As Mater's first pitch will curve its way in there for strike number one. Uh, you know, if you talk to Head coach John Burner, heck, even I got to turn that off. Whoopsie, he's head coach or, or assistant coach Ricky Holm. It'll be clear to see that they're just gonna pretty much just toss this game up to the wire as that pitch is just as midge outside for ball number one. As North Platte struggling to to find any momentum on the pitching mound, have given up 20 runs here, and we're only in the top of the fourth. Four in the first, six in the second, and then 10 in the third. As Mater's now 2-1 pitch into Townsend. It's popped up and we drifting foul for the second strike of this at bat. It's 2-2 two two the count now to Tyler Townsend. Ty Hanneborg should be on deck for North Platte High School with Caden Jonason in the hole with Bulldogs. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Outside, it's ball three to the left fielder, Tyler Townsend. We're 3-2 as Townsend potentially trending towards his second walk today. Zachary Mater will get the sign and deliver now his 3-2 pitch. That's outside ball four and on over to first goes Tyler Townsend here in this top of the fourth of the leadoff walk. And with that, now here comes Ty Hanneborg. He grounded to short in his first and lone plate appearance today. He now has a runner at first base being one Tyler Townsend. On deck, Caden Jonason and Jack Polk in the hole for Platt High School. As Mater delivers. That pitch is there for strike number one. It's 0-1 the count now. Also, thank you to our sponsors here for today, CT Computer Services, your IT guy since 2005, located on 905 South Willow Street. Next pitch, low and away, ball number one. 1-1 one one the count now to 
Ty Handelboard playing second base yet again, as always. Tyler Townsend on over at first for North Platte High School. Probably their toughest game of the season so far, and just in terms of a scoring aspect, as that pitch is going to sneak on in for strike number two. It's one and two the count with nobody out. One runner on for the Bulldogs. One and two. Handelborg ready. So is Mater. Here comes his one-two pitch. Oh, low around the knees, but too low for ball number two. So now the preparation begins for head coach John Byrne and assistant coach Ricky Holman trying to find a way for next game to go better for the Bulldogs as the 2-2 comes in. High and away, ball three to Hannah Borg. Three and two the count now. And the, and the, the tough part is, is how are you going to motivate the squad because, you know, there are games, you know, where you lose 10 nothing, 10 2 that can get into people's heads, but... When you get to the 20 nothing mark, man, that's going to take some real talking, too, as that one is squared on over to short. The throw to second, and first for the double is not going to get there in time. So Ty Hannibal will reach on the fielder's choice. But one run, or excuse me, one out does come to fruition as forced out goes Tyler Townsend at second. And now that brings up the leadoff batter, Caden Jonason, to the plate. One for one today, he doubled to the gap in right center field, and then walked in his last plate appearance has Ty Hanneborg at first. As the Bulldogs are still searching for their second hit today, Grand Island has nine total hits today on their side. First pitch, it's going to find its way in. Strike number one to Jonathan. 20 runs on nine hits and one error for Grand Island. No runs on one hit and two errors for side of North Platte High School. Mater now with his 0-1 pitch will fire it in. Once again, that outside, you know, Zachary Mater and his pitches so far today have been to the outside part of the zone. I don't think any single one of them has reached the inside part so far, but it's working for him. He's got an 0-2 count right now with one down. He'll fire that 0-2 count in. And it's too high upstairs for ball number one to the senior, Jonasson. Following Joni, it's going to be Jackson Polk, and then Jordan, it was going to be Jordan Yonkers, but probably Gabe Moreno will be on deck. As here comes the 1-2 count. Once again, upstairs with that pitch, it's 2-2 two and two the count now. With one out in this top of the fourth inning. Oh, I know, if you can't believe it, it's top of the fourth. Feels like we've been here for a decade already. And, you know, that's just... Brings, brings me back to a time my first year as I hold that thought 2-2, grounded on over to third. The glove and throw to second. The throw to first will not be attempted, so they'll get the pickoff again at second, so Joni will reach on in fielder's choice. But this brings me back to a time where um, my first year of, of, of casting here in North Platte where, you know, it, the... North Platte Community College Knights women's softball team had their season, and there was a season where they just struggled to find that final out. And so far today, North Platte High School has kind of, you know, generated that energy of <laughs> they, they just can't seem to find the final out, and that's what led to this 20, 20 nothing lead as now up comes Jack Polk. He'll see his first pitch outside for ball number one against Mater. Jonathan at first. That off speed in the zone for... Strike number one, one and one the count now to the shortstop. With two down here in the top of the fourth. On deck with Gabe Moreno with Landon Greeno in the hole. That one grounded foul down the third base side. So now it's one and two the count with two down for Jack Polk. As North Platts trying to scrape together, they're still still trying to find the second hit of this game for them. The lone hit has come from Caden Johnson's double to lead the game off. Here comes the one-two from Zachary Mater. That one grounded back to the pitcher as Mater gloves it. The throw to first will be in time, and that's how the inning will come to an end. The Bulldogs had an opportunity to maybe generate some offense, but couldn't get anything going. We're now going to head to the bottom of the fourth inning. A 20 to nothing lead for the Islanders when we come back here at FM 98.1 and 14.10. And as always, video live streaming on NorthFlatPost.com.
After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch, Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics? Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. See me, Pete Foltz, at 501 South Jeffers for a free insurance review. Welcome back here to Ryder Park North Platte High School. Currently at the moment is trailing Grand Island and the Islanders 20 to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Our happening breaks brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. You can check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. Gabe Moreno is still on the mound for North Platte High School here where his leadoff batter it's going to be Jacob Albers. He's 0 for 1 today. Line drived out to Ty Hanneborg at second. And his first at bat then walked in his next two. Moreno, just like all the other North Platte pitchers that have come on to today's game, looks pretty good in his first appearance when he came in for relief efforts. And then we'll see how it goes when he gets a full inning to work as he'll fire into Albers. And it's down low in the dirt. Ball number one, following Albers, Zenon Sack, and then Ethan Foley for the Islanders. As that pitch is going to find its way in for strike number one. One and one, the count now. As in there for strike number two is. Keep Moreno looking pretty good here against Jacob Albers is the one, two. Check swing. Oh, just outside. Ball number two. It's two and two the count now. Two and two with nobody out here in this bottom of the fourth inning as Moreno will get the sign for McIntyre and fire. That's once again, oh dear, down low. There's ball three. It's now three and two the count which has really been the crux of North Platte's problems today, is finding that final strike. The 3-2, and it's down low in the dirt. Ball four is on over to first will go Jacob Albers, and now up comes Zen and Sack to bat. It would be Zen and Sack, but now it's going to be a pinch batter as it's Jack Holinsky who will be batting for the Islanders as they do have a runner on first, as that one is smashed up into the air. Gap right, excuse me, left center field. It's going, and it is absolutely gone. That is a two-run home run for Jack Holinsky. On the first pitch he sees today, it's a two-run home run. And just like that, in the 10th hit, it's now 22 to nothing. Is now was going to be Ethan fully up to bat as it's Zenon Sack. Now will be up to bat. One for two today against specifically now Gabe Moreno. First time Moreno will be seeing Sack today. He struck out swinging in his first plate appearance. He singled in his second to left field and was hit by a pitch in his third as Moreno's first pitch is too high and tight inside for ball number one. 1-0 the count. Moreno has that one swung on and fouled off by Sack for strike number one. 1-1 one one the count now. Following sending Sack, it might be Sam Dinkelman, but most certainly we'll be seeing a pinch hitter in this situation. Swung on and missed by Sack for strike number two. It's 1-2 two the count now with nobody on and nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. As 
Here comes the one, two. Popped up, drifting towards Stifler and Polk. And gloved up, though, by Jack Polk. And there's out number one. Good defensive adjustment there for Jack Polk to track it down close to the foul line. And there's out number one as now up to the plate today. Dylan Heinrichs now up to bat for Grand Island. A 22-0 lead. 22 runs on 10 hits. One error for the Islanders. No runs, one hit, two errors. North Platte High School. Heinrichs up to bat with Barrett Obermiller on deck and Edgar Hernandez in the hole. As Moreno will get the sign and deliver in his first pitch to Heinrichs. It's outside for ball number one. It's 1-0 the count now. Thank you again to our sponsors here for today's game, Sand Hill State Bank. Most come into Brandon Banking with locations in North Platte, Ogallala, Grant, and many more. Head to sandhillstate.com for a full list of services and locations. That's popped up and then gloved by Moreno for out number two. That's exactly, and that's what we have rarely seen today from North Platte High School. A team that really does a good job of that, of getting pop-up outs. But that seems to be like the third or fourth one only today. As Barrett Obermiller is up to bat, he was hit by a pitch in his lone appearance last inning. Now faces Gabriel Moreno. That pitch is down low in the dirt for ball number one. It's 1-0 the count now to Obermiller. Edgar Hernandez on deck with Jackson Nesvara in the hole for the Islanders. Here comes the 1-0. Once again, low and away. That time, ball number two to Obermiller. Now, here comes the 2-0 count. Ooh, that one's going to sneak on in for strike number one. That one close to the inside. Two and one with two down now here for Barrett Obermiller at the plate. Randall's pitch. Round it on over to Stifler. He gloves it. The throw now on over to first, and it's going to be in time. Good reach from Landon Greeno, and an even better throw from the freshman Stifler. And just like that, the inning will finally come to an end. Should be. It was a quick one, two, three for North Platte. Well, I say one, two, three. One, two, three after the home run from the side of Grand Island to put him up 22 nothing. We're now going to the top of the fifth inning, the last half inning of play here in this ball game as the Bulldogs trail 22 nothing. We come back to Ryder Park, FM 98 1 in 14 10. And of course, the video live is streaming on NorthPlatPost.com. Market for a new or pre owned car, truck, or SUV? Look no further than Bill Summers Ford Honda Nissan Lincoln for your next vehicle. Look online 24 7 at BillSummers.com. Bill Summers is Western Nebraska's leasing headquarters, and they have aggressive financing to get you into the vehicle you've been dreaming of. Check out all the inventory at BillSummers.com anytime. Bill Summers Ford Honda Nissan Lincoln, where families are our business. Highway 83 and Walker Road in North Platte, and online 24 7 at BillSummers.com. Great Plains Health Orthopedics in North Platte is ready to serve you with board-certified orthopedic surgeons and a team of medical professionals who specialize in hip, knee, and shoulder joint replacements and revisions, minor to complex hand injuries, sports medicine for both the serious athlete and the weekend warrior, new and innovative, operative, and non-operative procedures, and work-related injuries. Same week appointments are available. Call Great Plains Health Orthopedics today. Your health is our mission. Great Plains Health. Welcome back here, Ryder Park. 22 to nothing is the score right now in favor of Grand Island and the Islanders in this top of the fifth inning in our half inning breaks. Brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. You can check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group at his location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. As well as other sponsors for today's game, Dave's Place, Pizza and Wings. To find out more, 1510 East 4th Street. As that one's going to bounce off the face mask of Gabe Moreno from Zachary Mater, and just like that, the Bulldogs will get a runner onto the base pads here to lead off this top of the fifth inning. The last half inning of play is probably going to have a courtesy runner potentially as assistant coach Holm is looking at Moreno as he seems to have a bloody nose after taking that pitch to the face. So I probably just think they're going to be 
maybe potentially nose plugging him up as they are going to bring I believe a trainer out to help as out comes Grand Island coach to have a talk with to find somebody to plug his nose as actually we'll have a courtesy runner for the side of North Platte High School for Gabe Moreno after he took in that pitch to the head bounced off of the side of his helmet and right on his nose as it's Jordan Yonkers who will be courtesy running here for North Platte High School as here comes Landon Greeno up to bat he's 0 for 2 today grounded out on over to second base in his first plate appearance then flew out in his, in his second as that one's in there for Mater for strike number one it's Oh, and won the count now to him. Now, next pitch for Mater is too high for ball one. One and won the count. As now here comes Acre Mater's 1-1 one, one pitch in the first baseman, Greeno. That one fouled off of Greeno's bat for strike number two. It's one and two the count now. It's currently it's again a 22-0 lead in favor of Grand Island and the Islanders. As Zachary Mater now with his one-two pitch delivers. That one popped up, drifting towards right field, but will be gloved by the first baseman. I believe that's then sack on over at first, and there's the first out of this top of the first inning, and now that brings up to bat following the pop-up from Greeno. Dean McIntyre now for the Bulldogs. He's 0 for 2 today. Flew out into left field in his first plate appearance, but reached on an error in his second. First time facing Zachary Mater as that first pitch is high up there for strike number one. One won the count now, 22-0. 22 runs on nine hits, one error. Grand Island, no runs, one hit, two errors for North Platte High School. That one tight and low at the feet for ball number one. One and won the count now. Bulldogs still looking for that second hit today. They let off strong with a leadoff double from Caden Jonason, but that's been the only hit today for the Bulldogs as Mater's next pitch is low and away. Ball number two, two and one the count now with one down in this top of the fifth inning. And McIntyre will take a deep breath and get back into the box and Mater now will look to fire his two, one pitch. That's in there high up, but in strike number two, two and two the count now to the catcher McIntyre with Connor Stifler on deck and Race Morky in the hole for North Platte High School. As here comes the two, two. That one driven into left field for a base hit, and there's the second hit of the day for North Platte High School on two strikes. Stan McIntyre pulls through and finally gets the second hit for the Bulldogs in his first hit today, and just like that, there's two runners now on the base pads, North Platte High School, and so far when they've had a runner in scoring position, they have been 0 for 4. And now that brings up to bat Logan Hayes will be batting for the Bulldogs here. Instead of Stifler. And 22 nothing the lead for Grand Island, the Islanders. But there are two runs on the base pad for Hayes. The pitch from Mater is too low and outside, ball number one. So far this season, when it comes to Logan Hayes, the freshman getting some action, he's hitting 250, no RBIs. That next pitch for Mater is way outside for ball two, so now a 2 and 0 count to the freshman Hayes. Race Morky's on deck for North Platte High School with Tyler Townsend in the hole. Runner at first is Dean McIntyre with Jordan Yonkers at second. Mater now will deliver his 2 0 pitch to Hayes. Off speed's in there for strike number one. It's 2 and 1 the count now to freshman Logan Hayes. Game number one here of this doubleheader between Grand Island and North Platte High School. 
I'm off to the best start for the Bulldogs. They trail 22 to nothing. The pitch fouled off the bat of Hayes. There's strike number two. It's two and two the count now. Two and two, one out, top of the fifth. Runner in scoring position, Yonkers at second for the Bulldogs. Zachary Mater will get the sign and now fire his 2-2 pitch. That one's right in there for strike number three. Logan Hayes caught looking. And there's out number two in this top of the fifth. And here comes up to bat the last potential batter for the Bulldogs here today. Race Morkey. Well, today in this first game. Race Morkey now up to bat. So far for Morkey, he walked in his first plate appearance, but struck out swinging in his second. The pitch fouled off the bat of Race Morkey for... Strike number one, the right fielder in today's game. As Tyler Townsend's on deck, and then Ty Hanneborg in the hole for the Bulldogs. It's Mater, fired the 0-1. That's outside ball number one. It's 1-1 one one the count now. To again, Reese Morkey. 1-1 one one with two down. Mater. This is, again, a long time at second and fires. Ooh, that is really tight inside, but it finds the zone for strike number two. One and two the count now, and here comes the potential last strike of this game number one. Mater glances at second. Here comes his one-two. Popped up, driven out to left, and fouled by Morky. So we'll still stick it at one and two the count with two down in the top of the fifth inning. 22-0 the lead for Grand Island. In this game, one of the doubleheader. Mater takes a long look at second again. And here comes the 1-2. High up, ball 2. 2-2 two two now the count to race Morky. The 2-2-2 two, two and two count. The two balls, two strikes with two outs here in this top of the fifth. As Mater once again with his windup and the delivery. Driven out to left field. Good hit, but just pulled too far foul from Morkey. And we'll still keep it at two and two. Now, don't be superstitious about today's game. I'll actually get to that comment here after this pitch. As Mater glances again at second. And now here comes his 2-2 count. It's down low, ball three. Good patience from Race Morkey as it's now a full count, three and two. Good patience from Morkey, and with that, and now a full, full count. Three, two, and two. Three balls, two strikes with two outs. The pitch popped up and popped foul behind our press box. So we'll still stay, whoops, he's wrong button. We'll still stay at three and two. Morkey could load the bases here if he walks or hits. Mater, another long glance at second. Here comes a three, two. Just above the letters, ball four. And just like that, Morkey will go on over to first. Great patience from Race Morkey. And he draws the walk. And now the bases are loaded for Tyler Townsend. And how about Tyler Townsend today? Two walks in this ball game. And a game that's been very weird. <laughs> Two walks from Tyler Townsend. A good start. He's out against... Mater is that one's popped foul and drifting towards the parking lot. And there's strike number one to the left fielder, Tyler Townsend. Runner at third base is Jordan Yonkers. McIntyre at second got the second hit of today's game. And then it's Race Morkey at first as he drew the walk. That pitch, though, in there. Strike number two. It's a quick 0-2 count to the left fielder, Townsend. Zachary Mater now will wind up. Look to deliver. Is 0-2 pitch to Townsend. Way outside and a great save. Puts this at a 1-2 and two count now. My good heavens. Great jumping save. Now here comes the 1-2. Swing and a miss by Townsend. And that is how this game will come to an end as the first game of this doubleheader ends in an un glorious manner for North Plant High School as they fall in this game giving up only two as they only squandered two hits themselves and they fall in game number one 
22 to nothing. And this is game number one of the doubleheader here between Grand Island and North Platte High School, and it was just not the start the Bulldogs were looking for after a strong showing last week against uh, Aurora, where, you know, they even though they didn't really put up the metrics in terms of a of totality and hitting, they did look very, very poised and ready to take on a, as we can all agree, a very strong Grand Island squad here today, but boy, howdy, the pitching just could not find any momentum at all, and because of that, walks and walks upon walks then turn into hits that then turn into runs and next thing you know the game got to 20 runs before you we were even before you we were even finished with the third inning and that's how this game just unfortunately came to an end for North Platte High School as they fall in game number one of the doubleheader to Grand Island 22 to nothing we're going to step aside and we are going to take a break when we come back we will have our quick stop post game show right here at the 98.1 Hey, 1410, and of course, video live streaming as always on NorthPlatPost.com. The DNN Event Center wishes everyone a great sports season. With North Platte and Nebraska weather, things change quickly and can make our lives a little more difficult. Thank goodness for the DNN. The DNN offers hourly rentals for all types of sports practices, including turf, courts, batting cages, and equipment usage. Call the DNN Event Center to schedule your team's practice times and for more league information for all sports seasons. For over 30 years in our community, for your next event, the DNN Event Center. Growing up, my parents always encouraged me to do what's right, even if it wasn't easy. I'd always hear my mother's voice say, do the right thing. That stuck with me. Every day, just do the right thing. That's it. The rest takes care of itself. At Shelter Insurance, we believe in doing the right thing for our customers and our communities. Ask me, Matthew Musselman, about Shelter's auto, home, and life options. Buying a car? It's not always the most pleasant experience, but it doesn't have to be that way. 23 years, that's how long Premier Toyota has been in North Black community, delivering a car buying experience that's friendly, easy, and fun. Check PremierAutoplex.com first, then stop by your lot at 2600 South Willow Street in North Platte. Come see us, Premier Toyota, for your next new Toyota or pre-owned vehicle. Premier Toyota at PremierAutoplex.com. Where do you go for wings? Dave's Place. Where do you go for pizza? Dave's Place. What about cold drinks, a family atmosphere, and nightly specials? Dave's Place. Hmm, sounds like a sweep for Dave's Place. Pizza made from fresh dough, drink deals, and yes, the best pizza and wings. It's Dave's Place. Dave's Place on East 4th Street or at davesplacenp.com. Order it. Carry out. Door dash. Dave's Place. Whoop, whoop. The North Platte Public Schools prepares all students to be productive, responsible citizens in a safe, caring, supporting learning environment with caring staff, engaging curriculum, clean facilities, and updated technology. You can rely on our schools giving your child the tools they need for a successful future. For more information, including enrollment and career opportunities, visit nppsd.org. North Platte Public Schools. Communicate. Connect. Commit. Buying a car? It's not always the most pleasant experience, but it doesn't have to be that way. 23 years. That's how long Premier Toyota has been in North Black community, delivering a car buying experience that's friendly, easy, and fun. Check PremierAutoplex.com first, then stop by your lot at 2600 South Willow Street in North Platt. Come see us. Premier Toyota for your next new Toyota or pre-owned vehicle. Premier Toyota at PremierAutoplex.com. Family first. <laughs> My dad used to tell us that all the time. But family first wasn't just something he'd say to us. It was how he lived every day of his life. And it's how I try to live mine, too. At Shelter Insurance, our agents are dedicated to helping provide personalized auto, home, and life protection that puts your family first. See me, Matthew Musman, on how I can help your auto, home, and life needs. Are you ready to embark on an exciting new career? Larry's Glass has been a trusted name in custom glass design for over 40 years, and they are seeking a skilled glazier to join their team. If you have a passion for precision and craftsmanship, this is the perfect opportunity for you. 
install glass in commercial, residential, and auto settings. Get paid while you train for a new career. Stop into Larry's Glass at 211 West 5th Street, North Platte, and discuss how you can be part of their team and build a fulfilling career. The DNN Event Center wishes everyone a great sports season. With North Platte and Nebraska weather, things change quickly and can make our lives a little more difficult. Thank goodness for the DNN. The DNN offers hourly rentals for all types of sports practices, including turf, courts, batting cages, and equipment usage. Call the DNN Event Center to schedule your team's practice times and for more league information for all sports seasons. For over 30 years in our community, for your next event, the DNN Event Center. Welcome back here to Ryder Park, where North Platte High School falls in game number one here to Grand Island and the Islanders, 22 to nothing. Boy, howdy, that was quite a uh, that was quite a game for game number one here of this doubleheader. You know, North Platte, this, so far this season, has been the team that's been dealing out the, the punishment on the offense, but today they received a little bit of their own their own medicine as they fall to Grand Island here in this first game, 22 to nothing, and now will fall to 6-2. and two on the season. I mean, where do we want to start? Where do you want to start with today's game? Because it was just a doozy from the from the drop of the hat. You know, Easton Jones got the start for North Platte High School in, in this game. And he got off to a pretty good start. You know, he looked like he was pretty poised in his first couple of pitches and then it all started to fall apart from that point on. He gave up four earned runs in the end. And then Easton Geisler came in the bottom of the first to take over for him. He did again a serviceable job in terms of getting through that first inning and then gave up 15 earn well, excuse me, he gave up gave up another six earned runs in that inning alone before being taken over by Jordan Yonkers, who then struggled just as much, gave up some more earned runs, and then Gabe Morano in relief, gave up three earned runs, and that's how this game came to an end for North Platte High School, where they fell 22 to nothing in the first game. One of those games, you just got to chalk it on up and head on to the next one. That's all I could say, and that's probably all uh, head coach, you know, coach John Byrne would say, and coach Holm would say, too. You just got to you just gotta kick it up for, for, for a terrible performance and, and move on to the next game. We're going to step aside. We're going to take a break, come back, Merit Prize Financial Money Player of the Game, and then we'll take a break and come back for game number two right here at FM 98.1. AM 1410, and of course, as always, be live streaming on our flat post.com. With Sandhill State Bank's new upgraded cart management experience, you can now control your carts anytime, anywhere. The new features and added control allow you to prevent fraud like never before. Get increased transaction details, turn your cart on and off whenever you'd like, and report your card lost in an instant, all from our mobile app. More insights, more control, and more security for your banking experience. Bank local and go far with digital banking solutions that go wherever you go. Visit SandhillState.com to learn more. Sandhill State Bank, member FDIC. The DNN Event Center wishes everyone a great sports season. With North Platte and Nebraska weather, things change quickly and can make our lives a little more difficult. Thank goodness for the DNN. The DNN offers hourly rentals for all types of sports practices, including turf, courts, batting cages, and equipment usage. Call the DNN Event Center to schedule your team's practice times and for more league information for all sports seasons. For over 30 years in our community, for your next event, the DNN Event Center. Your husband is pretty handy to have around. He makes the world's best mac and cheese. He's in the Tickle Monster Hall of Fame. <laughs> and he can teach anyone how to throw strikes. But a busted pipe and a basement full of water? Honey, I think we need a plumber. Is a little out of his league. That's where a homeowner's policy from Shelter Insurance comes in handy. We'll help get your house back in order and your husband back to what he does best. <laughs> See me. Pete Foltz at 501 South Jeffers for a free insurance review. It's the Quick Stop post game wrap up. Quick Stop never closes with 24 locations open 24 hours a day. Welcome back here to Ryder Park. North Plant High School falls in game number one of this doubleheader to Grand Island 22 to nothing. I mean, what else? There's really nothing to say about this game. You know, the Bulldogs only came up with two hits, one at the very beginning of the game and essentially one at the very end of the game. So, uh, really, you know, Coach Byrne and, 
and Holm are probably going to talk to the guys and say, you know, got just wipe it out. There's really nothing disappointing you can say or anything. You just got to tell them to to wipe it out of the memory bank and move on to the next one because, again, it's a double header, so you got to play another game here, and you already know this Grand Island squad's going to put up another strong effort in this second game, so Bulldogs really need to get their head in it if they want to, you know, I want to say continue, but not, but at least have a relatively good day today before, again, they go on tomorrow to take on, that's right, Carney. Yeah, that's right. We take on Carney tomorrow at noon. So it's going to be quite a, a long night if the Bulldogs can't seem to find any momentum here in this second game. Our Mayor Prize Financial Money player of the game, of course, is going to go to Caden Jonason here today, even though Joni didn't have too much of a extremely impressive day from uh, from the hitting standpoint as a lot of North Platte did, didn't, didn't have the best. He was at least two for three today with one hit as well as a walk. Got that leadoff double to start the game, but another good start for Caden Jonason leading the team in batting average. He had a 700 here today, and that, of course, keep bumping itself up as time goes on. When Money Matters, talk to Marshall Doty, Mark Tillman, as well as Jacob White, your financial advisors with CIO Wealth Strategies, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, in North Platte, Nebraska. Talk to them about all your professional financial service needs, Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, member FINRA, and SI. PC. We're going to step aside and we're going to take another break. We come back game number two between North Platte and Grand Island right here as always. FM 981 AM 1410 and of course live streaming NorthPlattePost.com. I'll see you here in just a couple of minutes. Growing up, my parents always encouraged me to do what's right. Even if it wasn't easy. I'd always hear my mother's voice say do the right thing. That stuck with me. Every day, just do the right thing. That's it. The rest takes care of itself. At Shelter Insurance, we believe in doing the right thing for our customers and our communities. Find me, Brent Rogo, at 502 East Francis. Are you ready to embark on an exciting new career? Larry's Glass has been a trusted name in custom glass design for over 40 years, and they are seeking a skilled glazier to join their team. If you have a passion for precision and craftsmanship, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Install glass in commercial, residential, and auto settings. Get paid while you train for a new career. Stop into Larry's Glass at 211 West 5th Street, North Platte, and discuss how you can be part of their team and build a fulfilling career. Are you or a loved one in need of medical equipment to improve your quality of life? Look no further than Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment. Their state-of-the-art and affordable medical products are specifically designed to return your independence. From manual and power wheelchairs, mobility scooters, and lift chairs, to walking aids, ramps, hospital beds, and bath safety products. They have everything you need to make your home a comfortable and safe place to live. They can even provide CPAP and BiPAP equipment and supplies, as well as oxygen equipment and supplies. Call Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment today. Where do you go for wings? Dave's Place. Where do you go for pizza? Dave's Place. What about cold drinks, a family atmosphere, and nightly specials? Dave's Place. Hmm, sounds like a sweep for Dave's Place. Pizza made from fresh dough, drink deals, and yes, the best pizza and wings. It's Dave's Place. Dave's Place on East 4th Street or at davesplacenp.com. Order it. Carry out. Door dash. Dave's Place. Whoop, whoop. With Sandhill State Bank's new upgraded cart management experience, you can now control your carts anytime, anywhere. The new features and added control allow you to prevent fraud like never before. Get increased transaction details, turn your cart on and off whenever you'd like, and report your card lost in an instant, all from our mobile app. More insights, more control, and more security for your banking experience. Bank local and go far with digital banking solutions that go wherever you go. Visit SandhillState.com to learn more. Sandhill State Bank, member FDIC. Growing up, my parents always encouraged me to do what's right, even if it wasn't easy. I'd always hear my mother's voice say, do the right thing. That stuck with me. Every day, just do the right thing. That's it. The rest takes care of itself. At Shelter Insurance, we believe in doing the right thing for our customers and our communities. See me. Pete Foltz at 501 South Jeffers for a free insurance review. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch, Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics? Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? 
<laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Ask me, Matthew Musselman, about Shelter Life Insurance coverage options. Free PC and Mac checkups at CT Computer Services in North Platte? That's right. Let CT Computer Services diagnose your systems to ensure your hardware integrity, security, and overall PC Mac health are running as they should. For a free PC Mac checkup, stop in at 905 South Willow in North Platte or call 308-534-3628. CT Computer Services, your IT guys since 2005. Are you or a loved one in need of medical equipment to improve your quality of life? Look no further than Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment. Their state-of-the-art and affordable medical products are specifically designed to return your independence. From manual and power wheelchairs, mobility scooters, and lift chairs, to walking aids, ramps, hospital beds, and bath safety products. They have everything you need to make your home a comfortable and safe place to live. They can even provide CPAP and BiPAP equipment and supplies, as well as oxygen equipment and supplies. Call Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment today. We're always open right around the corner, quick stop. With your 24 hour convenience store, fast, friendly, no one gets you more. Gas, food, your favorite drink, get everything you need in a blink. That's why everybody stops at quick stop. We're always open. The North Platte Public Schools prepares all students to be productive, responsible citizens in a safe, caring, supporting learning environment with caring staff. Engaging curriculum, clean facilities, and updated technology, you can rely on our schools giving your child the tools they need for a successful future. For more information, including enrollment and career opportunities, visit nppsd.org. North Platte Public Schools. Communicate. Connect. Commit. Where do you go for wings? Dave's Place. Where do you go for pizza? Dave's Place. What about cold drinks, a family atmosphere, and nightly specials? Dave's Place. Hmm, sounds like a sweep for Dave's Place. Pizza made from fresh dough, drink deals, and yes, the best pizza and wings. It's Dave's Place. Dave's Place on East 4th Street or at davesplacenp.com. Order it. Carry out. DoorDash. Dave's Place. Whoop, whoop. Are you ready to embark on an exciting new career? Larry's Glass has been a trusted name in custom glass design for over 40 years, and they are seeking a skilled glazier to join their team. If you have a passion for precision and craftsmanship, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Install glass in commercial, residential, and auto settings. Get paid while you train for a new career. Stop into Larry's Glass at 211 West 5th Street, North Platte, and discuss how you can be part of their team and build a fulfilling career. Buying a car, it's not always the most pleasant experience, but it doesn't have to be that way. 23 years, that's how long Premier Toyota has been in North Platte community, delivering a car buying experience that's friendly, easy, and fun. Check PremierAutoplex.com first, then stop by your lot at 2600 South Willow Street in North Platte. Come see us, Premier Toyota, for your next new Toyota or pre-owned vehicle. Premier Toyota at PremierAutoplex.com. The proceeding was a North Platte Post sports presentation. Today's game brought to you by Sand Hill State Bank, Premier Toyota, Dave's Place Pizza and Wings, CT Computer Services. Today's game also brought to you in part by Shelter Insurance, Great Plains Sports and Therapy, Great Plains Home Care Equipment, Larry's Glass, Bill Summers Ford, the DNN Event Center, Larry's RV, Double Dips. The Fortify Group, CIO Well Strategies, uh, Puro Clean, and North Platte Public Schools. To watch a replay of today's game or to see future broadcast schedules, go to NorthPlatPost.com. This has been an Eagle Communications Sports Presentation. It's time for North Platte Post Sports on FM 98.1, AM 1410, and video live stream at NorthPlatPost.com. Today's game brought to you by Sand Hill State Bank, Premier Toyota, Dave's Place Pizza and Wings, 
CT Computer Services. Today's game also brought to you in part by Shelter Insurance, Great Plains Sports and Therapy, Great Plains Home Care Equipment, Larry's Glass, Bill Summers Ford, the d and Event Center, Larry's RV, Double Dips, the Fortify Group, CIO Well Strategies, uh, Puro Clean, and North Platte Public Schools. Here's Paxton Gordon. Hey, everybody. It's uh, me, Paxton it's, Gordon, uh, me, here Paxton again Gordon. as I welcome you back to one Ryder Park, North Platte High School, taking on Grand Island here in game number two of the doubleheader between North Platte High School and Grand Island and the Islanders. North Platte High School in game number one. You just, you know, we don't talk about it. Now, let's just clear that game from our mind, just get it out of the system. You know, everybody has one bad game, and that, we'll just say, was their bad game here this year for North Platte High School as they fell 22 to nothing against Grand Island in game number one. And it's one of those things where you sit there and you just go, oh, boy, we got a game number two to go through? And, and that's just in the, in the sense of, like, man, you know, that game one was just so tough. Nothing, nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing was working for North Platte High School on either end of the spectrum, whether it be the defense, the pitching, and then, of course, you get to the hitting at the same time, and that itself didn't help too much as the Bulldogs fell in game number one, 22 to nothing. The pitching, you know, while I would say the you know defensively the errors weren't too bad, only giving up two errors, and defensively not many mistakes were put forward by the infield or the outfield. It's the fact, really, they just didn't really have any opportunities to make plays, and I think that's something that, you know, you know the FBO Nationals, which is, again, a majority of what a lot of these players here on this North Platte squad have either were done last year or were going to this year, that's one of their huge go-tos, and when you talk to Coach, 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 of course, oh good heavens, head coach John Byrne or, or Ricky Holmia, you know, they talk about making sure that, that not only can the pitchers get out of the innings unscathed, but they give opportunities for the infield and the outfield to make plays. And unfortunately for North Platte High School, they just couldn't really string anything together to allow the defense or even particularly the offense as well to, to, to make take advantage of anything that's going on here when they were facing the side of Grand Island. And because of that, the Islanders were just allowed to rack up runs, primarily from, again, some pitching woes where Bulldogs not only couldn't find final outs, but also struggled to really find any opportunities in the strike zone itself. And they just had walk upon walk upon walk upon walk that then just led to more issues that then just led to the Bulldogs not really being able to find any momentum, which then in turn ended the Bulldogs with a not-so-happy game where they fell 22 to, um, excuse me, 22 to nothing. Well, we're getting ever so closer to game number two between these two teams. So we'll step aside and we'll take a break. We come back, we'll have our starting lineups and some hopefully some ideas of what will go better for the Bulldogs here. We can come back, FM 981 and AM 1410 with, of course, live streaming on NorthPlatPost.com. We're always open right around the corner. Free stop. With your 24-hour convenience store. Fast, friendly, no one gets you more. Gas, food, your favorite drink. Get everything you need in a blink. That's why everybody stops at Quick Stop. We're always up and right around the corner. Quick Stop. Buying a car, it's not always the most pleasant experience, but it doesn't have to be that way. 23 years. That's how long Premier Toyota has been in North Black community. Delivering a car buying experience that's friendly, easy, and fun. Check PremierAutoplex.com first, then stop by your lot at 2600 South Willow Street in North Platte. Come see us. Premier Toyota for your next new Toyota or pre-owned vehicle. Premier Toyota at PremierAutoplex.com. Brandon is super pumped about Runza. Runza is so sweet. Especially all their desserts. Oh, those are the sweetest. Chocolate, vanilla, and twist ice cream cones, four flavors of shakes, chocolate chip cookies, and ice cream sandwiches. Literally sweet. Oh, I love your enthusiasm. Well, I love Runza. So sweet of you. Come satisfy your sweet tooth. 
Because from the way we make it to the way it makes you feel, Brunza makes it all better. Whether you're a weekend warrior, youth, or professional athlete, the Great Plains Health Sports Medicine Team has you covered. The team includes orthopedic surgeons, athletic trainers, and other healthcare specialists who spend their time at local high school and college sporting events, ensuring that athletes stay as injury-free as possible. In the event of an injury, the team remains committed to returning athletes to competition as quickly and safely as possible. Contact the Great Plains Health Sports Medicine Team by calling 308-568-7456. Are you ready to embark on an exciting new career? Larry's Glass has been a trusted name in custom glass design for over 40 years, and they are seeking a skilled glazier to join their team. If you have a passion for precision and craftsmanship, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Install glass in commercial, residential, and auto settings. Get paid while you train for a new career. Stop into Larry's Glass at 211 West 5th Street, North Platte, and discuss how you can be part of their team and build a fulfilling career. This is the Bulldog Pregame Show from FM 98.1 and 14.10 a.m. Presented by Quick Stop. Always open right around the corner. Quick Stop. Welcome back here, Ryder Park. Quick Stop Pregame Show, 27 locations, open 24 hours a day. Call Quick Stop. Always open right around the corner. It is time, it is time, it is time for our Double Dips Ice Creamery Star Ting lineup. Double Dips Ice Creamery in the Historic Canteen District of North Platte offers 24-plus different flavors of hand-dipped ice cream served in a variety of ways. Double Dips also offers homemade waffle cones and bowls alongside homemade fudge and freshly baked desserts. Hey, they also have available the ice cream trailer for all your outdoor events. Starting on the side of Grand Island and the Islanders, once again, Ethan Foley will be leading off in the second base position. He'll be the first one-hole hitter, Sam Dinkelman at shortstop. He'll be the two-hole hitter. Alongside Ian Ahrens, he'll be in center field, the three-hole hitter, Gabe Ruiz. In the four-hole, he'll be at first base, Jack Stenson in right field, five-hole hitter. Zenon Sack is today's designated hitter in the six-hole. Jacob Albers will be in the left field. He's a seven-hole hitter, Ian Kostler at third. With Trent Burplank catching in the nine hole, Cedric Sullivan will be pitching here for Grand Island and the Islanders in this game, number two. For North Platte High School, it's Caden Jonason. He'll be batting leadoff at center field with Jackson Polk at shortstop in the two hole. Easton Jones will be at first base. He's the three hole hitter with Landon Greeno on the mound here for North Platte High School in this game, number two. Dean McIntyre will be catching in this game alongside Logan Hayes at third base. He's the six-hole hitter. Ray Smorky in left field, seven-hole hitter. Tyler Townsend, right fielder in the eight-hole. And then Tyne Hanneborg in the nine-hole at second base. Bulldogs looking to hopefully give a little bit of a better showing here in this game number two. And that will do it, though, for our quick stop pregame show. Again, 27 locations open, 24 hours a day. Co-Wick stop, always open right around the corner as up comes one Caden Jonason as we are just getting ready to start this game number two between the Bulldogs and the Islanders as again it's uh, Cedric Sullivan will be on the mound for Grand Island here to begin this game at number two on the year for Sullivan he has a in his three appearances a one and zero record has yet to give up an earned run and when it comes to strikeouts he will end up here towards the bottom he's got eight total strikeouts on the season for Grand Island he'll be facing Caden Jonason to start as Joni will lay down the bunt to lead it off what a beautiful bunt from Jonason and he is safe at first and what a great way to start for the Bulldogs it's a FMBO national and Coach Holmes special, the leadoff bunt. We've seen it so many of times. As on to first goes Caden Jonason to lead this game off with a bunt. And with that, Jackson Polk will be up to bat with the runner on over at first being Caden Jonason to lead this game off for the Bulldogs. Just like last game, Jonason got the... First hit of the game, he had a double in that first game. The lone hit all the way up until around the fifth inning. And he does so here as the first pitch into Jack Polk is strike number one from Cedric Sullivan. And Sullivan, again, will step and fire. That's in there around the knees for strike number two. It's 0-2 the count now here in this top of the first inning. 
One runner on, Jonathan at first. As Sullivan gets the sign in from Verplank, and now we'll fire the 0-2 pitch. Here it comes. Popped up, but it falls foul out of play, and with that, still stay at 0-2 the count. It's Easton Jones on deck with Landon Greeno in the hole for North Platte High School. Probably be a little more aggressive from the batter's box. I would say they really didn't, I would say, pose too much of a threat in game number one, but really didn't take many chances. And that one is swung on and missed by Polk for first out of this inning as he goes down swinging. And to be honest with you, I would rather see that than, you know, get a, get a strikeout like we saw so many times last game. And now that brings up Easton Jones to bat for the first time here today. Again, Jones only was up to the bat one time last game after he was pulled in the first inning. Off seeds from Sullivan high up, but it finds his zone. It's 0-1 the count now. Jones still on over at first base. He's a steal threat, leads the team in steals, as there he goes. That one's down low, the throw on over to second. Will not be in time as he gets away from Ethan Foley's glove and just like that Jonathan will successfully steal second base and it's a now 0-2 count into give me a 1-1 one one, should be a 1-1 one one count into Easton Jones as time is going to be called to give a breather to Caden Jonathan who's a little slow to get up but Senior walks it off, and he's ready to walk and rock and roll with another stolen base. His first here today now is in scoring position for the Bulldogs. Sullivan now will take a glance in at Verplank and get ready to deliver the pitch. Here it comes. Well, that's going to be outside. It's now 3-0 and oh, the count to Easton Jones. From Cedric Sullivan, Landon Greeno on deck with McIntyre in the hole. Sullivan glances quickly at second twice and fires. Well, that's just going to sneak in for the first strike of this at-bat. Three and one the count now to Junior Jones. Looking for his first hit in today's ball game as well as just today in general. Three and one, here it comes. Ooh, that's just going to sneak in as Jones thought that one was outside, but it's in there for strike number two, and now the count has gone full for Easton Jones, is playing first base in the second game. Sullivan gets ready. Now fires his 3-2. Squared up and foul down the third base side for still a 3-2 count. Wind constantly blowing once again from right to left. At around 5 to 10 miles per hour as Sullivan now a 3-2 count with one down. Fires. Swing and a miss as down goes Easton Jones swinging. Second strikeout here of today's game for Sullivan, and it's already two down in this top of the first inning. As up comes the pitcher, Landon Greeno. Greeno didn't get a hit in last game for the Bulldogs, but would love to do so here because it most certainly would bring Caden Jonason home from second. Bulldogs 0 for 5 with runners in scoring, excuse me, 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position last game. Sullivan's pitch is in there for strike number one. Oh, and won the count now. As it quietly got away from Verplank, and now we'll go once again here. Dean McIntyre is on deck with Logan Hayes in the hole for the Bulldogs. Sullivan will like what he sees from Verplank, and will look to fire after once again taking a glance at Jonathan at second. The pitch! Popped up, drifting towards left field. On comes Albers, and he'll glove it for the third out of this inning. Another opportunity for the Bulldogs coming up empty-handed. We'll now move to the bottom of the first inning. North Plant tied up here, nothing, nothing, after getting the first hit of today's second game. We come back at them 98-1 and 14-10. And, of course, video live streaming, NorthPlantPost.com. Are you or a loved one in need of medical equipment to improve your quality of life? Look no further than Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment. Their state-of-the-art and affordable medical products are specifically designed to return your independence. From manual and power wheelchairs, mobility scooters, and lift chairs, to walking aids, ramps, hospital beds, and bath safety products. They have everything you need to make your home a comfortable and safe place to live. They can even provide CPAP and BiPAP equipment and supplies, as well as oxygen equipment and supplies. Call Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment today. 
Growing up, my parents always encouraged me to do what's right, even if it wasn't easy. I'd always hear my mother's voice say, do the right thing. That stuck with me. Every day, just do the right thing. That's it. The rest takes care of itself. At Shelter Insurance, we believe in doing the right thing for our customers and our communities. See me. Pete Foltz at 501 South Jeffers for a free insurance review. With Sandhill State Bank's new upgraded cart management experience, you can now control your carts anytime, anywhere. The new features and added control allow you to prevent fraud like never before. Get increased transaction details, turn your cart on and off whenever you'd like, and report your card lost in an instant, all from our mobile app. More insights, more control, and more security for your banking experience. Bank local and go far with digital banking solutions that go wherever you go. Visit SandhillState.com to learn more. San Jose State Bank, member FDIC. I'm Jared Remus with Jerry Remus Chevrolet of North Platte. The Bulldogs play here on FM 98.1 and 1410 AM, KOQ AM, North Platte. We've got the keys to your new car. Welcome back here to Ryder Park. It's currently a tight ball game. Nothing, nothing here in this bottom of the first inning. Bulldogs no runs on one hit, no errors in their top of the first inning. Now it's Grand Island's bottom half of the inning to see what they can do. Again, our, our inning intermissions are brought to you in part by Kevin McGann of the Fortifying Group. You can check out Kevin McGann of the Fortifying Group at his location, 621 South Dewey, Suite B. As Ethan Foley is first up to bat to go against the lefty landing green. Let's ground it on over to Hayes with the glove. The throw to first will be in plenty of time. And there's out number one. Beautiful ground ball on over to Logan Hayes, the freshman at third base. And he gets a beautiful throw to first, and there's one down on the first pitch of this bottom of the first inning. And that is exactly what the Bulldogs didn't really do all of last game. Easy ground outs, and that's probably what I think is best describes Landon Greeno is, while he doesn't throw really hard or have a lot of heat behind his pitches, he sure does a fantastic job of forcing batters to go into ground balls and get easy outs for the defenses. That pitch outside ball number one to Sam Dinkelman. Next pitch is turned on and fouled off for strike number one. You know, Landon Greeno's been only here at North Platte for, you know, a little under a year now. He'll, of course, cross that bridge as we get closer to the American Legion season. So far, it's been a key part for both teams. The pitch, that one's down low, ball number one to Dinkelman. Greeno, huge utility guy. You see him in relief efforts and starting. He plays the outfield. He plays the infield, third base, first base. Anything you need him to do, he'll play. The 2-1. Just a bit outside there. It's 3-1 the count now to Dinkelman. And it's shades of last game is where this next at bat here, this current at bat for the Bulldogs is currently at. It's 3-1 with one out as Greeno steps and fires. Drilled into the gap in right center, and Joni's going to cut it off and there's a one-out single from Sam Dinkelman, and one runner gets on for Grand Island here in this bottom of the first inning. So following that hit from Dinkelman, now up to bat, it's going to come Ian Aarons for Grand Island, and Gabe Rees is on deck with Jack Stenson in the hole. Runner at first is Sam Dinkelman, as Reno will take a glance at first and fire. That pitch and the off-speed low and away for ball number one. It's 1-0 the count now with one runner on. Dinkleman at first. As Greeno will like the sign he gets from Dean McIntyre, he'll square up and fire, but step off and pick off Dinkleman, but he'll get back in time. So the pitching out prospects right now for today, this game, are, are looking nine grim right now for the Bulldogs. Um, they've gone through a majority of their bullpen arms as Greeno will fire his 1-0. That one foul off down the third base line. Foul, so it's 1-1 one one the count now. So they've gone through basically everybody, and the remaining pitchers so far that I know off the top of my head is Landon Greeno, Hayden Jonason, and Jack Polk. Polk most certainly will be tomorrow's starter, so they do not want to be cutting into his pitching at the very least as Greeno fires the 1-1. Once more, found off by Aarons. Of course, we know Jonason, who normally plays most of his time in, sec in, in center field, is, is known for 
his pitching yeah, well it can come in for relief efforts, but outside of that, I don't know what the oh race Morky as well. Forgot about that. The one two. Beautiful off speed and it's in there. It got Aaron's looking absolute beauty from landing Greeno for the second out of this inning. And now there's two down in this bottom of the first to bring up Gabe Ruiz. Bulldogs already off to a better start. And this came number two compared to the game number one. As again, it's Dinkleman on over at first. He takes off a run in, and he'll successfully steal second again. Greeno got the long windup. And that's really going to be the probably the deal here today for North Platte. It's one of the things that he probably wants to work on. He's getting his pitches out a little quicker because last year there were many opportunities for opponents to get the steals as that one's in there for strike number one. It's one and one the count now to Ruiz. But I already love what I'm seeing from Landon Greeno, and that's just kind of what you expect from Greeno. Just so reliable anywhere you put him. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. That one's going to be a little too low for ball one. It's 2-1 and one now the count. And as I talked about, Jonason as well as Polk are the pitchers that I know off the top of my head. And then Ray Smorky as well in left field also could be on the mound. There goes the runner on over to third, the off speed, the throw to third. It's not going to be in time as Sam Dinkelman will successfully steal third. Back-to-back -back steals from Dinkelman now puts him at third base. And that's now three and one the count into Gabe Ruiz as... Reno looking to find the final out here without giving up a run. Well, that's high and away. Ball four, and Ruiz will take his stroll on over to first. For the first walk of today's game. North Plant on the pitching mound is now up to bat. Jack Stenson for Grand Island. Following Stenson, Zenon Sack, and then Jacob Albers for the side of Grand Island. Again, on over at third base. Sam Dinkelman, back-to-back -back steals, and then now Gabe Ruiz at first. Stenson up to bat, Greeno delivers. That one slowly rolled over to Jack Polk. The throw to second, the easy out, and the Bulldogs will get out of this first inning unscathed, only giving up one run, a huge improvement over game number one and looking good here in this game number two. We're going to step aside, we're going to take a real quick break. We come back, second inning action right here, FM 98.1 and AM 1410, with, of course, our video live streaming. Brought you in part... By one, Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group on NorthPlatPost.com. Are you ready to embark on an exciting new career? Larry's Glass has been a trusted name in custom glass design for over 40 years, and they are seeking a skilled glazier to join their team. If you have a passion for precision and craftsmanship, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Install glass in commercial, residential, and auto settings. Get paid while you train for a new career. Stop into Larry's Glass at 211 West 5th Street, North Platte, and discuss how you can be part of their team and build a fulfilling career. Where do you go for wings? Dave's Place. Where do you go for pizza? Dave's Place. What about cold drinks, a family atmosphere, and nightly specials? Dave's Place. Hmm, sounds like a sweep for Dave's Place. Pizza made from fresh dough, drink deals, and yes, the best pizza and wings. It's Dave's Place. Dave's Place on East 4th Street or at davesplacenp.com. Order it. Carry out. Door dash. Dave's Place. Whoop, whoop. Welcome back here to Ryder Park. North Plant High School tied up with Grand Island here in this top of the second inning. Nothing, nothing. Again, our half inning breaks brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. As it's uh, up to that now, following the out from Jack Stenson, we're now going to have Dean McIntyre up to bat here. It's quickly in a... 0-2 hole against Cedric Sullivan and make that an 0-3 hole as he goes down swinging for the first out of this second inning. Third strikeout for Cedric Sullivan is now Logan Hayes will come up to bat for North Platte High School. The freshman who is again at third base here today is home umpire having to talk with catcher Trent Verplank. Now it's Sullivan... Now pitching in the Hayes. First pitch is 
tight end sign for ball number one. Also, thank you to our sponsors here for today's game. That'll be Dave's Place Pizza and Wings. Find out more. 1510 East 4th Street and all their daily specials, wings, and more. Of course, their Tuesday 10 for 10 wings is just fantastic over there, so I highly recommend that. Dave's Place is that one's fouled off. Up above our press box, it's now 1-1 one one the count now to the freshman Hayes. On deck, race Morky with Tyler Townsend in the hole. Pitch. Once more, tight inside for ball number two. It's 2-1 two and one the count now again. Sullivan has three appearances yet to record a record. We're supposed yet to record an, an, an ERA, but is 1-0 and oh in his start so far, so very good pitcher as that one's fouled off by Hayes for second strike. It's 2-2 two and two the count now. Sullivan sets and fires. 2-2. Two, two. That one slowly rolled on over to Dinkelman at short. The throw to first will just be in time, and there's out number two from Cedric Sullivan. Hayes with the wheels almost got there, but just a bit shortened with that second out of this inning. And that brings up Race Morkey now up to bat for North Platte High School against Cedric Sullivan. Morkey with two down, looking to record the Bulldogs' second hit as here comes the pitch. Swing and a miss from Race for strike number one. Owen won the count now. Again, with the conclusion of this game, the Bulldogs will go home and Rest up for a short bit as they'll be taking on Carney tomorrow in Memorial Field. And that's going to be at noon will be that first pitch. We'll have, of course, our quick stop pregame at 11.50 here on FM 98.1 and AM 1410. As that one hits the dirt, ball number one. It's one and one the count now. That one sneaks in for strike number two. And now it's oh and, excuse me, one and two the count now to race Morky in left field. As Sullivan gets the A-OK -okay from Verplank and fires. That one will get past the third baseman, Kostler, and here comes Race Morkey. He's rounding first, making his way, stumbled a bit, and he's going to slide into second. A little bit of a stumble across first base, but he'll be able to make his way on over to second in time. Oh, and they're going to say he didn't step on the first base bag. And with that, the inning will come to an end. So a base running error from Race Morkey. Again, he stumbled, making his way to first. And they're going to say he didn't step on his now head coach, John Byrne, going to go have a talk with the infield umpire. But that's how this inning will come to an end. Unbelievable. Bulldogs might have had a double to get things rolling, but it ends in disaster as they get the final out. And we now go to the bottom of the second, all tied up here. Nothing, nothing. We come back, FM 98.1. And 1410 and video live streaming on NorthPlattePost.com. You are a loved one in need of medical equipment to improve your quality of life? Look no further than Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment. Their state-of-the-art and affordable medical products are specifically designed to return your independence. From manual and power wheelchairs, mobility scooters, and lift chairs, to walking aids, ramps, hospital beds, and bath safety products. They have everything you need to make your home a comfortable and safe place to live. They can even provide CPAP and BiPAP equipment and supplies, as well as oxygen equipment and supplies. Call Great Plains Health Home Care Equipment today. The DNN Event Center wishes everyone a great sports season. With North Platte and Nebraska weather, things change quickly and can make our lives a little more difficult. Thank goodness for the DNN. The DNN offers hourly rentals for all types of sports practices, including turf, courts, batting cages, and equipment usage. Call the DNN Event Center to schedule your team's practice times and for more league information for all sports seasons. For over 30 years in our community, for your next event, the DNN Event Center. Back here to Ryder Park. It's now the bottom of the second inning. North Platte High School tied with Grand Island. Nothing, nothing. The inning last time for the Bulldogs, unfortunately, came to an end with a race. Morky did not touch first base, and because of that, the inning comes to a close, which would have been a nice double for North Platte High School, but just unfortunately, some base running errors led them to that mistake. And now up to bat with it comes Zenon Sack. For Grand Island and the Islanders, are again, half any breaks brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. You can check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group at his location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. Landon Greeno still on the bag. It's a 2-0 count into the designated hitter's sack. So here comes the pitch. That's going to sneak in there for strike number one. It's 2-1 the count now to 
Send and Sank. Also, thank you to our sponsors for today's game, Sand Hills State Bank, most committed brand of banking, locations at North Platte, Ogallala, Grant, and many more. That one is high around the letters, but in for strike number two to Zen and Sack. It's Landon Greeno, even though he got down on the count early, 2-0, and has worked his way back to a 2-2 two and two count. Here comes that 2-2. Two -two. Whoa, that's a nasty off speed that just barely gets below the knees for ball number three. Three and two. Count with nobody out here in this bottom of the second inning. As Greeno sets and fires. That one going to be checked, swung, and hit by Sack. Foul. So we'll still stay at three and two the count. Following Sack at Jacob Albers and Ethan Kostler, six, seven, and eight. Oh, the batting order here. The three, two. Slowly grounded on over to Jackson Polk at short. The throw to first is going to be in time. And down goes Sack in another beautiful ground out for the Bulldogs. Landon Greeno just getting back to what he does best. Forcing ground outs and pop flies. He's just so magnificent at doing that. And really I'm excited just to see how again in his first, not only first season here, of course, for the Bulldogs, but what it's going to transition to when he gets to American Legion time as it's Jacob Albers up to bat. That off speed has just been nasty from Greeno as that once again is going to find the strike zone. Strike number one against Albers. As Greeno will get the sign he likes for McIntyre and deliver. Well, that's tight inside and they're not going to give it to him. It's one and one the count now to Jacob Albers. Still nothing, nothing to score. Each team has one hit apiece. The 1-1. One, one. Another off speed. This time too low. It's ball two. It's two and one the count now. It's two and one with one out in the bottom of the second. Greeno will fire. Swing and a miss from Jacob Albers. Is that just strike number two? Two and two the count now from Greeno to Albers. Left fielder in today's game. Greeno get another strikeout and the second out of this inning. Here it comes. He sets it up. The 2-2. Two, two. It's too high, and now it's ball three, three and two. And here's what's going to be interesting. How can North Plant, after struggling in game number one on three, two counts, do in this second game? That was really the proprietor of their loss in game number one. Three, two. Well, I say that. It's going to hit Jacob Albers right in the hip. You know, you just, everyone talks about the caster curse, and, you know, unfortunately, I, I, I brought it upon us on that one as Albers goes on over to first, and now Ethan Kostler comes up to bat. Kostler here in this game number two is going to be playing third base. Was the pitcher in game number one? As Greeno will glance on over at first and deliver. Another good off speed, but it's going to find its way in for strike number one. It's 0-1. The count now to Kostler. Trent, Ver, Trent Verplank on deck with Ethan Foley in the hole for Grand Island. As here comes the pitch from Amanda Greeno. It's too high and outside. There's ball number one. One and one the count now. Ethan Kostler. One runner on. It's Jacob Albers at first for Grand Island here in this bottom of the second. Islanders won game number one, 22 to nothing. Greeno, long glance and fires the 1-1. One, one. Foul down the first base side for strike number two, one and two the count now. And this is kind of where if you're an Islander hitting coach, you kind of worry about Landon Greeno just because so far today he's shown he can really get some ground balls to his infielders and that 6-4-3 double play is could be in effect. I say that that pitch outside and low ball two, two and two the count now. So while Landon Greeno's done a great job of making sure he's getting things out, the struggles of finding the zone still persist among the Bulldog pitching staff here today. Here comes the 2-2 pitch from Landon Greeno. That one grounded foul down the third base side. 
So we'll still stay at two and two. But yeah, with how well Greeno's done today in terms of generating ground outs. Runner at first, Jacob Albers has to be on his toes. See if he can maybe get something happening. There he goes, Albers. That was low in the dirt, and there goes that chance of a double play. I was talking about how that was a possibility. And with the slow windup of Greeno, Albers will successfully steal second, and now it's a three and two count. From Landon Greeno to Ethan Kostler with one down. It's bottom of the second inning. Greeno, long glance and second fires. Once again, a beautiful off-speed pitch. Gets Ethan Kostler swinging, and down he goes. Another strikeout for Landon Greeno in the second out of this inning on a beautiful off-speed yet again. In his pitches today, Grand Island has really struggled to find any any way to take advantage of his off-speed, and Randall's been putting him up and putting him down with it, as now it's Trent Verplank up to bat. That off-speed just too tight inside. That time it's ball number one, one and over count now. Still at second, Jacob Albers could potentially steal third. We already saw Sam Dinkelman steal second and third when he was up base running. Swing and a miss from Verplank for strike number one. As Greeno looking to go another inning unfazed with no runners coming across for Grand Island. Is there any wood I can knock on real quick? Don't want to jinx myself as Greeno steps off. Still in this bottom of the second, two down. One and one that count to Verplank the catcher. As Greeno glances at second and fires. So check swing, they're gonna say he went around, so there's strike number two for Verplank and now Landon Greeno looking to end this inning. Again, scoreless, which is after how game one went, another what the doctor ordered type of deal. It's Greeno with a one and two count. Steps and fires. Popped and driven foul behind our press box, so we'll still stay. One and two the count. Ethan Foley is on deck with Sam Dinkelman. That is the one and two hitters in the order. If we get that far here, but two down, spot on the second inning. A one and two count. Greeno likes the call for McIntyre. Here comes that beautiful one two pitch. Driven out to center field. Johnson's coming up in it, and he'll get there in plenty of time and glove it for out number three, and that's how this inning comes to an end. Yes, there was one runner in scoring position, but once again, the Bulldogs were able to get out of it with really no fear at all. We're going to make our way top of the third inning. We're tied nothing-nothing. We come back here to Ryder Park, FM 98.1 and 1410, of course, video live streaming from platpost.com. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch, Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics? Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Ask me, Matthew Musselman, about Shelter Life Insurance coverage options. Free PC and Mac checkups at CT Computer Services in North Platte? That's right. Let CT Computer Services diagnose your systems to ensure your hardware integrity, security, and overall PC Mac health are running as they should. For a free PC Mac checkup, stop in at 905 South Willow in North Platte or call 308-534-3628. CT Computer Services, your IT guys since 2005. Welcome back here to Ryder Park, North Platte High School is tied with Grand Island here in this top of the third inning. Nothing, nothing in our half-inning breaks brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group, his new location. Well, his new location has been there for, I think, a year and a half now. Uh, <laughs> as I, as I have to change that up, I say that, but there's a quick little pop-up that's drifting over to Dinkleman at short. 
from Tyler Townsend, and there's out number one. One pitch, one swing, one out here. As again, our inning happening break brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. Check out his location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. There's already one down here in this top of the third inning for North Platte High School as Tiny Hanneborg now comes up to bat. See if he can decipher Cedric Sullivan, who so far has been having a good game for Grand Island here in this game. Number two, 27 total pitches, 21 strikes, and only six balls. We'll make that seven as that's down low to Hanneborg. Ball number one. So he could be, knock on wood, in for a pitching duel here between Greeno and Sullivan as that one too close to Hanneborg. Ball number two. It's 2-0 two and oh the count now as that almost hit Ty in the head. Nobody on. One out here, top of the third. The pitch. That off speed in, strike number one. It's two and one the count now to Ty Hanneborg. And Bulldogs so far in the two games that they've played so far against Grand Island have only accrued three total hits. How about make that maybe four? That one driven out to the left, but just pulled a foul by Ty Hanneborg. That's strike number two. Two and two the count now to the second baseman. You know, it's, it's been fun to watch Ty Hanneborg these last couple of years from North Platte High School. A utility man that was basically in his first season when I was here, used as a speed runner in pitch and pinch hitting situation, a pinch running situation. Soon got to see more options at second base last year and the outfield, or specifically second base when Carson Johnson was on the mound for the Bulldogs. The 2 2. Driven once again, that time the gap in left center and getting under it is Jacob Albers and he gloves it for round number one. Good hit though from Hanneborg. Got a good look on it, but just pulled right into the outfielder on the left. And there's out number two and then, you know, hitting this season well above 500 so far and having a great year at second. Excited to see what he can do in the American Legion system in months. But here comes Caden Johnson. He led the game off with a bunt. The lone hit for North Platte High School in this game, just like he was last game against Ethan Kostler. He's a lone bull on record a hit. Let's see what he can do against Sullivan as that first pitch was in for a ball. And that second one was down the middle for a strike. It's one and one the count now with two down for Joni, the center fielder. On deck, Jack Polk, and then in the hole, Easton Jones. Here comes the 1-1. One well, one's popped up. It's drifting towards Dinkleman at short, but in comes Ian Aarons in center, and he'll get there and glove it for out number three. A quick one, two, three inning for North Platte High School. We're going to make our way to the bottom of the third when we come back here at FM 98.1. Hey, 14-10, and you know, as always, live streaming on NorthPlattePost.com. Are you ready to embark on an exciting new career? Larry's Glass has been a trusted name in custom glass design for over 40 years, and they are seeking a skilled glazier to join their team. If you have a passion for precision and craftsmanship, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Install glass in commercial, residential, and auto settings. Get paid while you train for a new career. Stop into Larry's Glass at 211 West 5th Street, North Platte, and discuss how you can be part of their team and build a fulfilling career. Whether you're a weekend warrior, youth, or professional athlete, the Great Plains Health Sports Medicine Team has you covered. The team includes orthopedic surgeons, athletic trainers, and other healthcare specialists who spend their time at local high school and college sporting events, ensuring that athletes stay as injury-free as possible. In the event of an injury, the team remains committed to returning athletes to competition as quickly and safely as possible. Contact the Great Plains Health Sports Medicine Team by calling 308-568-7456. Welcome back here to Ryder Park. North Platte High School is currently tied with Grand Island and the Islanders. And nothing, nothing here in this bottom of the third inning. Our intermission and our inning breaks are brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortifying Group. You can always check them out. 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. Also linked to our sponsors here for today's game, CT Computer Services, your IT guy since 2005. Ethan Foley's up to bat for Grand Island and the Islanders here. He grounded out to Logan Hayes at third in his last plate appearance. He'll see ball number one from Landon Greeno. Greeno's up to 42 pitches, 20 balls, 22 strikes, so not the best in terms of strike-to-ball ratio, but getting those outs has been what's been super important for the Bulldogs. That one's skied and fouled up behind our press box for strike number one. 
And that's really what Landon Greeno's game's all about. Of course, Cedric Sullivan's got that precision and speed with his pitching. But Greeno, more for his control in, in terms of his spin rates and his ground out ratios, as that one's going to be fouled off for strike number two. He, would, he loves to just put the batters into situations where they are forced to not only hit, but it's in an awkward situation for an easy ground out or pop fly. The one, two... Oh, another beautiful off-speed from Greeno. Gets fully swinging, and down he goes for out number one. Another beautiful off-speed pitch, and the sinker from Landon Greeno. It's been on the money today. A pitch that, you know, last season we rarely saw from Greeno. Really putting it on here this season, and specifically today, and it's working wonders as it's Sam Dinkelman up to man here for Grand Island. He's one for one with a single today. He made it all the way to third with two stolen bases, but couldn't get anywhere further. So he'll see ball number win and one in from Greeno. As he sets and fires his next pitch, the 1 0. Make that 2 0 as that's in the dirt. Ball two, and probably for Greeno, you don't want to walk Dinkelman. As you know, he's got that speed to steal. 2 0 with. Nobody on and one down in the bottom of the third. The pitch. That one drilled the gap in left center. That one might go all the way to the fence, and it will go all the way to the fence. Dinkelman with one. Might turn for three here. Gets to second, and he'll pull the brakes, and that's a one-out double from Sam Dinkelman, and just like that, a runner now in scoring position for Grand Island and the Islanders. As here comes Ian Ahrens up to bat. He struck out looking in his first plate appearance. Uh, called out on that sinker from Greeno. But now there's a runner in scoring position for the Islanders here with Dinkelman at second. So Greeno will get the sign from Dean McIntyre and look to continue getting back to work, but he'll step off and reevaluate and take a breath. And the Bulldogs down to the very few arms in the bullpen, so hoping that Greeno can go pretty far into this game, maybe the fifth inning. At the least, the pitch. And off speed is off the mark and low. Ball number one to Aarons. Again, the last pitchers that I know off the top of my head for North Platte, Jonathan Polk and Race Morkey. Polk probably going to start tomorrow for the Bulldogs. So it's just Jonathan and Morkey. Another great off speed in there. Strike number one. For, for Landon Green, a one and one, one down. Dinkelman on over. At second, that one grounded slowly on over to Handelborg at second. The throw to first. It's in time, so there's two down, and that advances the runner, Dinkelman, to third. But now with two down, here comes Gabe Ruiz. Ruiz walked in his first appearance. The only walk of this game so far for a North Platte pitcher when it comes to pitching statistics but Dinkelman is at third, and he's 90 feet away from a run getting in. Off speed, off the mark from Greeno for ball number one. Following Ruiz, Jack Stenson, and then Zenon Sack for Grand Island. As Greeno with the windup now, the 1-0. Check swing. Ooh, they're going to say he went around. You know, that one, that one's mighty close, but they'll say he went around. It's 1-1 one and one the count now. Here comes the next pitch, the 1-1 one, one from Greeno. Another sinker, that time off the mark. Too low in the dirt, so it's 2-1 and one now to Ruiz with, again, Dinkelman at third. As landing Greeno with a 2-1, would love to get out of this inning unscathed. Takes a deep breath, the 2-1 pitch. Another sinker, this time pulling too tight in. Pull number three, it's 3-1 three and one the count now. Ruiz looking towards a walk here for the second straight at bat for him. 3-1 pitch from Greeno. That one driven out to right field. Morky's going to have to go back. He's still going. It gets to the fence, and one run will come across an RBI single as Ruiz is looking to push two, making his way to second, and he gets there in time. So that there is a two-out double from Gabe Ruiz, and it brings home a run, and now the Islanders will take a 1-0 lead. Their third hit today, but... Now that brings up Jack Stenson to the plate. He grounded out in his first plate appearance for the Islanders, and it has Ruiz now at second in scoring position once again for Grand Island. 
one nothing the lead for the Islanders here in this game number two of the doubleheader between North Platte and Grand Island. Grand Island won game number one, 22 to nothing. So far lead one nothing here in this bottom of the third as that pitch is high and away, ball one. Two outs for the Bulldogs. Would love to get out here, not surrender any more runs as that was the problem last game. They would get to the two outs mark but then not be able to produce that last final out as that pitch is in there for strike number one, one and one the count. Screeno will get the sign from Tian McIntyre. And now fire it into Stenson. That one foul back from Stenson to the netting. One and two the count. Gabe Ruiz at second for Grand Island here in this bottom of the third. A 1-0 run or lead right now for the Islanders. Greeno, the 1-2. Off speed, slowly grounded on over to Ty. Hanneborg takes a nasty bounce. He gloves it, and Easton Jones gets it. And that's how this inning comes to an end. Oh, one run came across on one hit for the Islanders. And with that, we're going to go to the top of the fourth inning. North Platte High School is now trailing Grand Island 1-0. We come back in the Bulldogs answer back. FM 98-1 and 14-10. And, of course, we do live streaming on NorthPlattePost.com. Her husband is pretty handy to have around. He makes the world's best mac and cheese. He's in the Tickle Monster Hall of Fame. <laughs> and he can teach anyone how to throw strikes. But a busted pipe and a basement full of water? Honey, I think we need a plumber. Is a little out of his league. That's where a homeowner's policy from Shelter Insurance comes in handy. We'll help get your house back in order and your husband back to what he does best. <laughs> Find me, Brent Rogo, at 502 East Francis. Where do you go for wings? Dave's Place. Where do you go for pizza? Dave's Place. What about cold drinks, a family atmosphere, and nightly specials? Dave's Place. Hmm, sounds like a sweep for Dave's Place. Pizza made from fresh dough, drink deals, and yes, the best pizza and wings. It's Dave's Place. Dave's Place on East 4th Street or at davesplacenp.com. Order it. Carry out. Door dash. Dave's Place. Whoop, whoop. Welcome back here to Ryder Park, North Platte High School. Currently at the moment is trailing Grand Island and the Islanders. one nothing here in this top of the fourth inning. And take a look at our sponsors here for the half inning break. Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. His location, 621 South Dewey Sweet B. So other sponsors here for today's game, Premier Toyota. Premier Toyota just south of ID and North Platte invites you to stop out. Take a test drive here today. From your Toyota, let's go places. Ball number one into Jack Polk, who is up here for the second time today. He struck out swinging in his first plate appearance against the current pitcher, Cedric Sullivan. And he misses again, that time for the first strike, strike one. And the next one, too low from Sullivan. It's... Two and one now. 38 total pitches from Cedric Sullivan. He's got about oh, 15 or so pitches in hand compared to Greeno, who's closer to 60. As Whoa, that one's going to bounce off the back of Jack Polk. And Polk will take a nice little stroll on over to first to lead off this inning for the Bulldogs. So the game tying run is now at first base. As here's Easton Jones up to bat. Of course, if you follow the American Legion system last year, you know Jones again was injured with a knee injury, got his lone plate appearance against Ogallala, and hit a home run <laughs> off his still injured knee to give the Bulldogs the lead in his lone plate appearance. Can he drive another run here today against Grand Island with Jack Polk at first? That one popped up, drifting on over to Sullivan, but now over to the third baseman, Costler. He drops it. Oh, my good heavens. They'll probably still get the easy out on over at second because, you know, poor Jack Polk was tagged up at first. So with that, we'll have Easton Jones reaching on a fielder's choice. But unfortunately, down goes Jack Polk on over at second base. So there's one down here in this top of the fourth. And here comes Landon Greeno. Flew out to the left field. Albers. 
in his first plate appearance. We'll now see what he can do with Jones on over at first. And one down here for the Bulldogs offense. The pitch. That one squared up and slashed down the right field side. Foul. Strike number one. Following Greeno, Dean McIntyre, then Logan Hayes. Some action in the bullpen for North Platte High School. I'd assume that's Race Morky warming up for North Platte, as well as Caden Johnson, just in case. Both need action. Ooh, that one's just barely in there for strike number two on the outside part of the plate. So it's 0-2 to the pitcher, Greeno. This top of the fourth inning. As Cedric Sullivan delivers the 0-2. Down in the dirt, ball number one. One and two the count. Probably won't be seeing Easton Jones attempting a steal. Big man's got long strides, but that quick acceleration, not really his forte. He might show me up here. Here comes the 1-2 from Cedric Sullivan, but he'll try to pick off Jones, and he'll get back in plenty of time. Again, I've been proven wrong before. I said that about Carter Kelly, but man, he was able to just like one hop over on two steps to second. If he tried to steal. One, two. Low and away. There's ball two. It's two and two the count now to the pitcher Greeno in this top of the fourth. Then we end to our sponsors here for today's game. CT Computer Services, your IT guy. It's 2005. Sullivan with the two, two. That one grounded on over to second. Picked up the glove to second. Foul to first. It just will make it in time. And that is a four, five, three double play. And with that, the a four, excuse me, four, six, three double play. And with that, and it will come to an end. And we'll now move to the bottom of the fourth inning right here at FM 98.1. Game 14, 10, and of course, live streaming as always, NorthPlatPost.com. Are you in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV? Look no further than Bill Summers Ford Honda Nissan Lincoln for your next vehicle. Look online 24-7 at BillSummers.com. Bill Summers is Western Nebraska's leasing headquarters, and they have aggressive financing to get you into the vehicle you've been dreaming of. Check out all the inventory at BillSummers.com anytime. Bill Summers Ford Honda Nissan Lincoln, where families are our business. Highway 83 at Walker Road in North Platte, and online 24-7 at BillSummers.com. Nicole is having her favorite runs of salad. The something something ranch salad. It's the chicken bacon ranch salad. But you can put whatever else you want around it. I'm here for the ranch. I'm with you. Runza's homemade ranch is perfect. It's so good. A classic. It's literally the only reason I like salad. Great point. Come get a salad with your ranch. Try Runza's chicken bacon ranch salad today. Because from the way we make it to the way it makes you feel, Runza makes it all better. I'm Jared, I'm Jared Remus with Jared. Jerry Remus Chevrolet of North Platte. The Bulldogs play here on FM 98.1 and 1410 AM, KOQ AM, North Platte. We've got the keys to your new car. Welcome back here to Ryder Park. Bulldogs currently here trailed right now. And then the Islanders won nothing. And as always, our intermissions and our, and our ending breaks are brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortifying Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortifying Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. As well as our other sponsors here for today's game, Sandhills State Bank. Most committed brand of banking with locations in North Platte, Ogallala, Grant, and many more. Head to sandhillsstate.com for a full list of services. And a location is it's Zen and Sack up to bat for the the Islanders. He grounded out in his first plate appearances. First pitch in from Landon Greeno is too low for ball number one. One run on three hits and no errors for the Islanders compared to no runs on one hits, no errors. North Platte High School. Beauty of a pitch from Greeno just a bit outside. It's ball number two. To Zen and Sack. Following Sack, it's Jacob Albers and Ethan Kostler, seven and eight in the order. That one popped up, drifting towards center field. Jonathan going back, still going. It's going to get to the fence line, so that's another double here, it looks like, for the side of the Islanders to lead off this bottom of the fourth inning as Sack leads it with a double, and now he's in scoring position to bring up Jacob Albers, who was hit by a pitch in his last appearance for Grand Island. 
63 total pitches for Landon Greeno. 34 strikes and 29 balls as Greeno wants a ball change. Again, warming up in the bullpen during the hitting order for North Platte was Race Morkey as well as Caden Jonason. So we could be seeing a relief pitcher probably in the fifth or the sixth for North Platte High School. Here comes Albers up to bat again at second is Zenon Sack as the first pitch from Greeno is low and away there, ball number one. Nobody out. One on here in this bottom of the, bottom of the fourth. Four hits now in grand total for Rand Island. Here comes the 1-0 from Landon Greeno. That's down low, ball three. It's actually ball two. It's 2-0 two oh the count, so... Starting to see Greeno lose a little bit of that touch we saw earlier today as he's getting higher and higher up in the pitch count. 65 now pitches total for Greeno. The 2-0. Beautiful sinker will find the zone. Strike one, two and one now. Two and one with nobody out. One runner on. And Island leading one nothing. Greeno. It's the sign. It'll take a long glance at second twice and now deliver. Tight end sign around the elbow. There's ball number three. It's three and one the count now to Alberts. Nobody out. This is where things get a little scary for North Platte. We've seen this already so too many times here today if two runners get on. Greeno fires. That's too high ball four and that's a walk. And now the bases have two runners on them. Sack at second. Albers at first, and here comes Ethan Kostler. He did sw strike out swinging, and now we'll have a timeout as in comes assistant coach Ricky Holm to have a talk with Greeno, and more probably more specifically the infield about their defensive positioning. Again, with two runners on, and then sack at second. Albers at first. Albers already has a stolen base today, so there is the potential of the double steal from this Islanders squad. Haven't seen it today, but it's always a possibility. But there's the more pressing need at the moment is there's nobody out in this bottom of the fourth. So with Kostler up, we could be seeing a sacrifice of bunt to move the runners up one base pad and potentially avoid a double play. So that's probably what Hick with assistant coach Holm is talking with his infield about to get them all set up. Again, Kostler 0 for 1 today, struck out swinging in his first plate appearance. Trent Verplank is on deck, and it's Ethan Foley in the hole, Grand Island. Still a 1-0 lead for the Islanders, one run, four hits, no errors on their side. No runs, one hit, no errors for the Bulldogs. As Ethan Kostler now steps in the batter's box, and here we go. Screeno, big glance at second. Now the pickoff, trying to get them. Ooh! as Ty Handelborg not happy with that call as they tried to do their Coach Ricky Holmes special. So Jack Polk will run in front of the base runner at second and then they'll try to pick him off, generating some confusion. And I think Handelborg thought he got him before he tagged up or at least got back to second base, but unfortunately not. And with that, here we go again. We have in the grass right now, Easton Jones expecting a bunt from Kostler, and he looks to lay the bunt down. Pulls back because that's going to be in the dirt for ball number one. So it's 1-0 the count now to Ethan Kostler. And it's just mandatory to see when there's nobody out and two runners on the base pads. So now Greeno will get back onto the mound, and Easton Jones talking with Greeno. He gets ready. Reno glances at second. Now the pitch. It's outside. Ball number two from Landon Greeno to Costler. The worst case scenario is now Easton Jones wants to have a talk with his infield, specifically more Logan Hayes at third about something. So interesting to see what type of tactics they're trying to play or plan is. But the worst case scenario in, this, in the situation you don't want to see is the base is loaded with nobody out if they can't get the out here on either Ethan Costler or at least one player 
on the base pads. As Greeno will get set once again, and he'll glance in. Costler most certainly get a bunt. A glance long time at second. Costler ready. Pulls back. That one's in there for strike number one. That's a much needed strike from Landon Greeno. As, again, in situations like this where someone's trying to bunt, it's always the most diciest of situations for either, for both the pitcher and the infielder because anything's on the cards. Two and one the count now. Greeno glances at second and delivers. Costler once again going to apply the bunt. He's able to put it down. Greeno throws it to third, and they're going to get the easy out at, at third base. Beautiful situation and beautiful awareness from Landon Greeno to throw out the runner at third instead of going to first. So now runners are still in scoring position, but not at third, at second and first for Trent Verplank. Because there's an easy force out at third base, and now with one down, I don't think we'll see Green Allen go back to that bunt as that pitch is high up and outside for ball one from Landon Greeno. So now with that, we have runners at second and first, Albers at second, Kostler at first for Verplank, who flew out in his first plate appearance. Grand Island here today. As Greeno now fires his 1-0. That one skied foul back behind our press box for... Strike number one, it's one and one the count now. One out, bottom of the fourth inning. Still a one nothing lead in favor of Grand Island. Landon Greeno gets the sign from Dean McIntyre. Glances again at second and delivers. That's way too up in the zone for ball two. It's two and one the count. As no action once again in the bullpen. So everyone's, especially the coaching staff for North Platte, can see if Greeno can go further. Ooh, that pitch is way outside. There's ball three. It's three and one the count now. Once again, you don't want to load the bases here for North Platte. Three and one. One out. Two runners on the base pads for the Islanders. It's second and first. Greeno looking for a ground out or at least getting a pitch in the zone here. The three one on the way. That's an, oh, ball four. Oh, my. Tough call that didn't go the way Reno wanted, and now the bases are loaded. So it's three runners on, and we'll have a courtesy runner coming on for Trent Verplank. Jackson Nesvara will be courtesy running, and now we're going to probably have a pitching change for North Platte High School. That'll end it for Landon Greeno. As Race Morkey will now be coming up to pitch. As Jordan Yonkers will be taken over in left field. So a really good start here for Landon Greeno. Only giving up one run on four hits. There's potentially more runs on the cards right now if Morkey can't get out of this inning. But overall, a, a great start for North Platte. Excuse me, well, specifically Landon Greeno in in the Bulldogs, specifically after that tough, tough first game they had is Landon Greeno will be taking over first base as well for Easton Jones. So the problem now becomes that the bases are loaded. <laughs> and that's that's the scary situation, you know, for Race Morkey. Because it's a blessing and a curse. I know that sounds kind of odd. Uh, when you think about it, but it's a blessing and a curse because if Race Morkey can ground out into a double play, the inning's over because there's a fourth out at any position. The issue then now becomes if he can't do that, runs can just freely come across, and that's what you don't want as Logan Hayes will sub out and Easton Jones will now take over third base. So it's a two-handed, it's a, it's a two-edged sword here for North Platte High School. You can hope that Morkey can ground out into a double play or at least force out the play at home, but also at the same time not giving up a run or a hit <laughs> and not walking anybody. <laughs> that, that's And after what happened in game number one, if you're Coach Byrne and Coach Holm, you're on the edge of your seats right now as 
Grace Morky takes over for Easton Jones, who is, uh, excuse me, for, for Landon Greeno, who made it all the way here, only again giving up the one run on the four hits. So very impressive performance for Landon Greeno, something you would, you would expect from him as he is, again, a great utility player for the Bulldogs and also just so reliable whenever you need him in any situation. So here comes Race Morky's final pitch to warm up, and what can he do? He'll be against Ethan Foley. Foley so far today is 0-2 with a ground out and a strikeout to his name. He'll have the bases loaded, though, Race Morky will, and that's where things can become a bit difficult. So Morky will fire his first pitch into Foley. It's high upstairs for ball number one. So I probably should clear that out. Want to know the count with bases loaded. One down, though, in this bottom of the fourth inning. As Morky fires... That one driven into the gap in left center. Jones is able to glove in. Tagging up, though, at third base is going to be Albers, and one run will come across on the sacrifice fly. But out of all the, out of all the scenarios, that's the best you can call for is... So now we have the sacrifice fly come in, and runners will be at the corners with another run coming in. It's 2-0 now, the lead for... Grand Island, but again, in what the what the dogs needed there was again to at least come away with one out, and they were able to do so. Is now the probably the toughest hitter that's been the thorn of the side for North Platte High School comes up. Sam Dinkelman now comes up to bat. He singled and doubled in his last two appearances. He'll be facing Race Morkey as that pitch is outside. Ball number one. Again, on over at third is Ethan Kostler, and it's Jackson Nasvara at first. As Morky will shake off a couple sides for McIntyre and take a glance at first. And now look to fire the pitch. It's high and away there, ball two. It's two and two the count now for Race Morky to Sam Dinkelman. Ian Aaron's on deck with Gabriel Rees in the hole for North Platte. Morky now with a 2-0 count, steps and fires in. Another pitch just too high. There's ball three from Race Morky, and now he's staring down the barrel of the walk. As two runners at the corners now for the Islanders. The pitch, that time in there for strike number one. Beautiful bounce back from Race Morky and exactly what the doctor needed. Two down in this bottom of the fourth. 2-0 lead for Grand Island. Two runs, four hits, no errors. No runs, one hit, no error for North Platte. Here comes the 3-1. That one skied into center field. Johnson going back on it. Still looking, and he'll glove it, and that's how the inning comes to an end. A beautiful little pinch hit situation in terms of coming in and subbing in. Race Morky as he'll get the final out. Bulldogs will just give up one run in this inning, and that's about it. We'll now go to the bottom, be top of the fifth. Or Platt trailing 2 nothing. We come back. FM 98.1 and 14.10. And of course, video live or streaming at We're always up and right around the corner. Save money at the pump at Quick Stop with the Dino Pay app. Dino Pay offers contactless payment using your preferred debit or credit card. The savings add up with 12 cents per gallon and even more on Tuesdays and Thursdays with rollbacks for savings of 15 cents per gallon. Huge savings with Sinclair Dino Pay saving you at the pump. Don't forget Frazzle Gourmet Slushes and for real shakes and smoothies. Gourmet coffee at everyday low prices on your favorite beers. Quick Stop. Family first. <laughs> My dad used to tell us that all the time. But Family First wasn't just something he'd say to us. It was how he lived every day of his life. And it's how I try to live mine, too. At Shelter Insurance, our agents are dedicated to helping provide personalized auto, home, and life protection that puts your family first. See me, Pete Foltz, at 501 South Jeffers for a free insurance review.
Welcome back here to Ryder Park, North Plant High School trailing Grand Island the Islanders 2-0 here in this top of the fifth inning. Again, our half inning breaks brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortifying Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortifying Group at his location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. It's Dean McIntyre up to bat here. He's 0-for-1, struck out swinging against Cedric Sullivan in his first plate appearance. Our timeout's brought to you in part by our other sponsors, or excuse me, our sponsors here for today's game. I say that, that's going to bounce on over through the glove of Sam Dinkelman. And there's a base hit on the side of North Platte High School. As McIntyre will get a courtesy runner in. That's the first error today, this time by Dinkelman as McIntyre reaches on an error. So... Subbing in for Dean McIntyre, Connor Stifler will be courtesy running as McIntyre leads off the top of the fifth with a hit. Now it was going to be Logan Hayes, but now it's Jordan Yonkers who will be in for North Platte High School to bat in this order. He's in there. His first pitch he seizes there for strike number one. As and the tying run is at home plate right now. Sullivan gets another good sign and delivers. Off speed is in there for strike number two. It's 0-2 the count now. Here against Jordan Yonkers. As Sullivan will get the sign and fires. That one crushed out to left field. It's going back to the fence. And it's going to bounce off the fence line. As that's going to be an easy double from Jordan Yonkers. And the Bulldogs now get into scoring position. Oh, so close to a home run. But a big double from the senior. Jordan Yonkers puts the Bulldogs just a bit away in scoring position from tying this game up. As now it's Race Morky. Coming up to hit again, he was accidentally, he was called out because he didn't step on first base in his first plate appearance. That would have been a double itself as now out comes a home, home plate umpire to have a talk with the Islanders coach about something. So we'll have time called, but what a big hit from Jordan Yonkers as he absolutely Almost got that whole run. It, the one time the wind decided not to show up was right there on that Yonkers hit because if it was just blowing it, it was normally we've seen all throughout today, that would have been a guaranteed hit. But unfortunately, it did not. And because of that, that's still going to be a double and it's going to put the runners in scoring position. Stifler at third and Yonkers now at second. To now bring up Race Morkey. He doubled, so he would have doubled in his first plate appearance today in this game number two. A correction. If he didn't, but he didn't step on the second, excuse me, the first base bag. So because of that, he got tagged out and the inning came to an end. So what can Morkey do here against Sullivan after Morkey was able to get that big hit in his last at bat? 2 0. 2 0 is the lead for the Islanders, but. Two runners in scoring position for North Planet second and third. That pitch is two tight inside ball number one from Sullivan. As there is some action in the bullpen for North Plant High School potentially for pitching, and it is Jack Polk who will be warming up with Kane Johnson. That pitch also, again, two tight inside ball two. As Morky now is up 2-0 in the count. Sullivan will get the sign in from Verplank and look to fire it in. Sullivan fires. Ooh, that just sneaks in on the outside part of the zone for strike one, two and one the count now. Two and one with nobody out and runners in scoring position at third and second. Sullivan, deep look and fires. Orkey looks to place the bunt down. Beautiful bunt. Uh-oh, Stifler's caught in a pickle. Oh, boy. Yeah, not good base running from the Bulldogs. They were all caught in a sticky situation. And they're going to tag out now. Jordan Yonkers at second. Horrid base running from the Bulldogs as Morky laid the bunt down. Stifler was going go to go home but pulled up the brakes. And because of that, Yonkers, who was already 
basically at third base gets caught in the jam. And because of that, now there's runners at the corners with one out. As Morky will make it with that fielder's choice, but because of that, a little bit of base running error. The runner at second, who was Jordan Yonkers, fortunately gets tagged out, and there's one down here in this top of the fifth to now bring up Tyler Townsend, who flew out to Dinkelman at short in his first plate appearance. Sullivan fires. It's high upstairs, ball number one. <clears throat> so the Bulldogs still luckily have two more, well, essentially two more outs to play with. But there are runners at the corners. Stifler at third, and then, of course, at first, Morkey. Well, one's popped up, though, and that's going to be drifted on over to Cedric Sullivan, the pitcher, and he gloves it for out number two, and that's not what the doctor needed and or ordered, and because of that, there comes potentially another missed opportunity for North Platte as here comes Ty Hanneborg. Still looking for his first hit in today's games. He has Morky at, at first and Stippler at third with two down. A huge opportunity for Ty Hanneborg here in this situation as Sullivan glances at first. It'll take a big breath and fire. That's too, up, too high upstairs for ball number one to Hanneborg. Following Hanneborg, Caden Jonason, and then Jackson Polk. As here comes now Sullivan's 1-0 pitch into Hanneborg. That one pops sky high, and it's drifting towards the third baseline. Coming on for it, and gloving it is going to be was well, going to be potentially Sam Dinkelman, but they're going to call it foul as he couldn't hold on. And with that, there's strike number one. It's one and one the count now. Still two down here in this top of the fifth. Two nothing lead for Grand Island. Bulldogs threatening to score again. They have a runner 90 feet away, Connor Stifler at third. So far today, they've been unsuccessful when any runner gets into scoring position on the offense team that normally has done a great job of converting those opportunities, struggling so far in these two games against Grand Island. Sullivan, now with a 1-1 count, fires to Hanneborg. Ooh, that's going to be in there. Strike number two to tie. And now the last potential strike in this inning. The Bulldogs were just knocking on the door of potentially scoring. Can Ty Hanneborg bring something home? One and two the count. Two down. Sullivan steps. Here he comes and fires. Oh, that one's just on the outside. It's two and two the count now. Two and two with two down. Worky at first, Stifler at third. As Cedric Sullivan now gets ready. He now breathes and fires away. That pitch outside. It's three and two the count now. Three and two with two down. Bases potentially could be loaded for Caden Jonason, who's up on deck now. If Hanneborg can walk. Three and two. Cedric Sullivan fires. That one driven, and it's going to fall in for a base hit. Morky's going to make his way on over to potentially third. Can he get to second back? He does in time. Was trying to extend it to third, but couldn't do so. But a hit from Ty Hanneborg, his first today. And it's a 2-1 lead now. In favor of Grand Island. And now here comes Caden Jonason up to bat. As runners at second and first, still two down, but an opportunity to tie this game if he gets a hit into the outfield. We saw it earlier today with that leadoff double in game number one. Now would be a perfect time to see it again. He's one for two today. Got on with a bunt in his first plate appearance, but skied out to Ian Aarons in his second. Sullivan fires. That off speed is, oh wow, just barely in there at the top of the zone for strike number one. As 
It's 0-1 the count now. Two down here in this top of the fifth. Cedric Sullivan, long glance at second, fires. That one ripped fair. It's going to be fouled down the third base side. Strike number two, that would have been a beautiful way to score some runs if it stayed fair, but unfortunately it did not. So because of that, it's now 0-2 the count with two down against Jonason. Sullivan gets the sign from Verplank behind home plate. Here we go. Sullivan with the payoff 0-2 pitch. That one ripped in the left field for a base hit. They're going to bring Race Morky on home, and he is going to score, and we have ourselves a tie ball game. The senior, Caden Jonason, once again, with some big money on the line, comes away with a big hit. And just like that, we are all tied up here at Ryder Park. 2-2 two, two in this top of the fifth inning. And now... What can Jack Polk do? Just like Ty Hanneborg, he has been on the verge of recording a hit today. And now, can he do the same with big money on the line and give North Platte the lead with Ty Hanneborg at second and two down in this top of the fifth? Sullivan. Now, get ready and fire to one. Jack Polk way upstairs. We're talking whole new area code with that type of pitch up in the sky. 1-0 the count now. Most certainly would expect maybe next inning a new pitcher for Grand Island. As Sullivan's up to 64 pitches. He fires. Oh, that one just found off the bat of Jack Polk. 1-1 one one now with two down in this top of the fifth. Much better game here for North Platte High School. In this second game, they're tied 2-2. Sullivan glances at second. Pitch to Polk. That's too high. Ball two. It's now two and one the count to Jack Polk. Polk sets and so does Sullivan. The pitch. That one looped and it gets into the second base's glove. Is it safe? Oh my good heavens. There you have. Go get your money's worth, Coach Holm. Not a good cause. It looked like Jonason was safe at second, but they're going to say he gets tagged down, and that's how this ending comes to an end. Oh, so close from the Bulldogs, but they did get two runs to come home, and with that, we are tied 2-2. We come back here to the bottom of the fifth inning, FM 98-1, AM 14-10, and, of course, live streaming, NorthPlantPost.com. The North Platte Public Schools prepares all students to be productive, responsible citizens in a safe, caring, supporting learning environment with caring staff, engaging curriculum, clean facilities, and updated technology. You can rely on our schools giving your child the tools they need for a successful future. For more information, including enrollment and career opportunities, visit nppsd.org. North Platte Public Schools. Communicate. Connect. Commit. Buying a car, it's not always the most pleasant experience, but it doesn't have to be that way. 23 years, that's how long Premier Toyota has been in North Black community, delivering a car buying experience that's friendly, easy, and fun. Check PremierAutoplex.com first, then stop by your lot at 2600 South Willow Street in North Platte. Come see us. Premier Toyota for your next new Toyota or pre-owned vehicle. Premier Toyota at PremierAutoplex.com. Welcome back here to Ryder Park. North Platte High School is now tied with Grand Island and the Islanders 2-2 here in this bottom of the fifth inning. Our half-inning breaks brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. As we now are going to make our way here into this bottom of the fifth race, Morky is on the mound for North Platte High School. Again, coming in relief effort for Landon Greeno last inning. He'll be facing Ian Ahrens first off. And now the question can become for the Bulldogs, can they hold firm here? Tied 2-2, spot of the fifth inning. So far today, the pitching staff has been up and down, mostly down in the first game. And then Landon Greeno came in and really held the fort down. But can the Bulldogs continue that momentum? 
here in this game number two. As they're now tied again, 2-2. Two -two with Ian Aaron's up to bat. That first pitch from Morky in there, strike number one. Strike number one, it's 2-2 two -two lead. Two runs on four hits and one error for Grand Island. Two runs on four hits, no errors for North Platte High School. Is it's ball number one in four. Race Morky. One and one. Now the count to Aarons, who's 0 for 2 today. Whoa, that pitch way outside in a whole new area code on that one. Two and one the count. Now following Aarons, it's Gabe Ruiz and then Jack Stenson, the four and five hitter. So we're three, four, and five in the order so far. In this bottom of the fifth. As Morky with the 2-1 pitch delivers. Well, and Sky straight into the air, drifting Twan over to left field, and it's going to be gloved by Jordan Yonkers in left for out number one. And now it's Gabe Ruiz who's up to bat. He doubled in his last plate appearance that brought a run home for Grand Island. So what can Gabe Ruiz do here with one down and nobody on? Grand Island, 2-2 two -two the game. Two runs, four hits, one error. Two runs, four hits, no errors for either side. The only lone error of this game coming on the side of Grand Island. As Ruiz now comes up to bat. For nobody to be on the base pads. Morky, right-hander, fires. Ooh, that's going to be in there in the bottom half of the zone for strike number one. It's so and one the count now. Morky will get the sign from McIntyre behind home plate, and he'll deliver his 0-1. Whoa, it's going to bounce off the back of the head of Ruiz. As Ruiz will stroll on over to first, being hit by a pitch, and now that's going to bring up Jack Stenson. To bat, he's 0-2 today with two ground outs, Stenson is. Ruiz is A-OK -okay as he tried to get out the way and just took a little slow speeder off the back, but... The back of the head, but he's A-OK, -okay, and now here comes Stenson. Following Stenson, Zenon Sack, and then Jacob Albers as time's going to be called. As we have a courtesy runner coming in for Ruiz. It's going to be Cohen Nelson. They take over at first for Ruiz, the first baseman. Ken... Morky and the Bulldogs hold it down here. They just got the game tied in the top of the fifth inning. A little bit ago. What can they do here? An opportunity to potentially... Potentially take the lead in their next inning. Can they hold it firm together and do so? And once again, it's got to fall upon the pitching on if that's possible. Because again, North Platte today, most certainly you can agree, has struggled... On the mound, specifically game number one, they give up 22 runs in game number one, but so far, tied it up here with Grand Island in the bottom of the fifth now. What can they do? They're going to loop that one, though, into right field fair, and that's going to probably bring Cohen Nelson on home. Maybe it's going to be a triple on the cards here for Stenson. He's going to waltz his way on over to third, an RBI triple, and just like that, the Bulldogs thought that they had an opportunity when they just tied the game there a half inning ago, and just like that, that lead goes away as Grand Island picks up there now. Third run here on their fifth hit, and with that, they now lead three to two with Zen and Sack now up to bat. Sack today, he's one for due, grounded out in his first plate appearance to Jackson Polk, but doubled over the head of Caden Jonas in his last plate appearance. And now is a runner at third base with one down being Jack Stenson. That one slowly grounded up the middle. Another run's going to come home. Now it's a 4-2 to two ball game. In favor of the Islanders now is, oh boy. Morky fortunately letting two get across here in this inning. 4-2. to two. And the pitching woes for North Platte continue on as 
Jacob Albers now comes up to bat. Hit by a pitch in his first at bat and then walked in his second. Can make Race Morky lock it down and get the double play here at the end of the inning. Following Albers, it's Ethan Kostler and Trent Verplank. Pickoff attempt is no good as Sack gets back in time. That's one out here in this bottom of the fifth. Bulldogs trail 4-2. As the pitch now in from Morky. Nice off speed. Good bounce back pitch from Morky as it's in the zone. Strike number one. You know, you I wouldn't say his pitches that gave up those two runs just a couple of seconds ago were, were horrible pitches. They found the zone, but just a little too much into the zone, specifically straight center that allowed those hits to come through. Because of that, what was a 2-2 game is now a 4-2 game with one out. Comes the 0-1, but they're going to try to pick off once again Sack, and that's unsuccessful. He gets back. So we'll still sit on an 0-1 count. and one one out, the pitch. Swung on and missed by Albers there for strike two. Again, even though Morky gave those two hits and two runs, I think this performance is off to a much cleaner start than it was against Aurora just a week ago when he started that game. Morky really struggled to find the zone. But this time, looking much better with his control. Maybe looking for his first strikeout today is... Another try to pick off in and sack, no good. So we're still at 0 and 2. This bottom of the fifth inning. One out here. Bottom of the fifth. Morky fires. Popped up. Drifting foul. Easton Jones will get under it. He gloves it. And there's out number two. Good bounce back at bat for Race Morky after giving up those two runs. Bounces back with a good easy pop up. And now here comes Ethan Kostler. He's 0 for 2 today. He struck out swinging on his first plate appearance and reached on a fielder's choice in his second. Has a runner still at first being Zen and Sack. As see what happens here. Another pickoff attempt will get Sack back. Morky doing a good job of making sure Zen and Sack can't get anywhere. On a steal attempt. As Costler now in the batter's box. Here we go. That one down low in the dirt. For ball number one. One and oh the count now to Costler. One and oh. Two down. Can Race Morky get out of this inning? Continuing to be unscathed. Or excuse me. Can not let any more runs come across, might I, might I insert. As that pitch is down low for ball two to Costler. 2-0 oh the countdown. Following Costler, it's Trent Verplank and then Ethan Foley, Grand Island. 2-0, two, oh, two down. Another pickoff attempt will get, Ver, will get Sack back. As it's 2-0 oh with two down now. Morky fires. Oh, that one's going to be too low. The runner's going to take off for second. The throw to second's in time, but just not quick enough to transition it over for the tag. So ball gets away from Dean McIntyre, and because of that, Zen and Sack will skirt on over to second. So now our runner's in the scoring position at second base with a 3-0 count now to Ethan Kostler. Pitch. That one's in the zone. Strike one. Good bounce back from Morky. Much needed. After three straight balls that were way down low. Can he bounce back and get the final out here of this bottom of the fifth? Morky now gets the sign. Couple glances at second. Here comes the 3-1. Popped up, and it drifts foul. So we now move the count to a full count at 3-2. and two. Can the Bulldogs convert? That's the question. Was that what? Three and two with two outs. Kostler up to bat. Morky on the mound. Full count. Here comes the pitch. Oh, it's too low ball four. No. 
So far today, I think North Platte High School has been unsuccessful on three two counts this entire day. I don't think the Bulldogs have gotten one out on a three two count as here comes out to talk with his pitcher is head coach Ricky Holm. Again, there's two runners on here. He got Sen and Sack at second, Ethan Costler at first. Trent Verplank is up to bat. He flew out to center in his first plate appearance and then walked in his second. What can he do here? And what can Race Morkey achieve to get this final out? That's the main difference. Can Morkey get the final out? It was a strugglesome affair in the first game for the Bulldogs to get not just an out to an inning, but, but really just any out. <laughs> but now with two down, can Race Morkey be able to do it. It's more key. Lance is on over to sack at second. And he fires. Tight inside. Ball number one to Verplank. Following Verplank, Ethan Foley and then Sam Dinkelman. The Grand Island and the Islanders. They lead 4-2 to two here in this bottom of the fifth. Bulldogs running out of opportunities to get runs across. As Morky glances at second and fires. Ooh, check swing at off speed, just a bit outside. Looks like he clipped the corner on my side, but I'm going to say no to that. So it's 2 0 the count now to Verplank. That time it finds the mark. There's strike one, 2 and 1 the count to Verplank. Big opportunity for the Bulldogs here to get out, only giving up two runs. They would hope it would have been no runs, but they'll do it two right now. The pitch swung on him, missed half-heartedly there by Verplank, and now it's two and two the count now. Two and two with two outs. Can Race Morkey get out of this inning? He shakes off a couple signs for McIntyre. Finds the one he likes. Two and two. Two outs. Here it comes. On the way. Oh, no. It's going to get away. And with that, the runner's going to advance up one base pad. It's luckily not going to bounce off of for Plank. But now it's going to push the count to three and two. And now we're back to the situations I talked about earlier. Bulldogs have been unsuccessful in getting out of three and two counts all day. Can they do it here? Morky shakes off another couple signs. Will he find the one he likes? He does so. Here we go. Race Morky now up to pitch the 3 2. Fouled off the bat of Verplank. Just barely able to get a little bit of the bat on that. And with that, we'll have another pitch. 3 and 2 at 2 down. The pitch on the way. Driven out to the gap in right field. It's going to fall in front of Tyler Townsend. So one run will score as well as two runs will come across. After that mistake in right field from Townsend, two more runs come across for Grand Island. It's now 6-2 to two in favor of the Islanders. And we're going to have Jackson Nesvara come up to pinch run for Verplank after he doubled into right. So because of that, here comes Ethan Foley. Will swing and miss on his first at bat or first pitch he sees from Morky. So now we have just a runner alone at second base for the Islanders, and they lead 6-2. Six, six runs on seven hits and one error. Two runs on four hits, no errors for the Bulldogs. The pitch. Oh, just a bit outside. There's ball number one from Race Morkey. One and one with two down. As he'll 
take a long look, look at second base and deliver his 1-1 pitch into Foley. Gosh darn it, that's down low. Ball two. Two and one the count now. Morky just really needs to get out of this setting. He's using up a lot of pitches, 33 in total. You know, at this rate, you might see Caden Jonason on up here to pitch in the next inning. Two and one with two down. The pitch. Titan side again. That one just off the Oh, he's going to say. That get any gesture to it. It's a strike. Yep, it's two and two the count now. Yep, two and two the count. Late adjustment from the home plate umpires. That one just squeaked in. So it's two and two and two down. Can Morky do it? Here we go. Runner at second. Race Morky delivers. Oh, boy, that one's driven in the center field, and it's going to get in for a base hit. Joni gets over Jonason's head, so another run will come across. Running on over to third is going to be Ethan Full. He's going to pull back, and he'll get safely back to second. Another run comes across for Grand Island. And it goes from bad to worse for North Platte High School. As Ethan Foley will get on over to second place, or second place, second base. And now it's seven to two the lead. Six, seven runs on eight hits. Or excuse me. Seven runs on eight hits. No error, or excuse me, one error for Grand Island is that pitch is in there, strike number one. To Dinkelman. It was two for two today, a single, excuse me, two for three with a single, a double, and a fly out on his cards. As here comes the next pitch on the way. Swing and a miss from Dinkelman, but that's going to get away from McIntyre, and because of that, Foley's going to skirt on over to third on the passed up ball, and now it's an 0 and
North Platte High School. So Greeno today 0 for 2 flew out to Jacob Albers in left field in his first plate appearance and then grounded out to Ethan Foley in his second. 7-2 lead, 7 runs on 8 hits, 1 error for Grand Island. 2 runs, 4 hits, no errors for North Platte High School. Is that fastball down low, ball 1 from Gannon. In the top of the 6th inning. Update for the juniors game that's currently going on, courtesy of one TJ Haggard. It's 11 to 5, Grand Island in the lead in the bottom of the fifth inning. As it's a 3-0 count into and then Greeno make that 4-0. That will walk Greeno on four pitches over to first. And now we have a runner on the base pads for North Platte High School with one down in this top of the sixth inning. It's now Dean McIntyre's turn to come up and see what he can do. He's 0 for 2 today. Struck out, swinging his first plate appearance. Did reach on an error in his second. Can he drive Greeno to second base? The pitch. That one's right down the middle there. Strike number one from Gannon. 0 and 1 and 1 out here. That's top of the fifth. Which means top of the sixth inning. Next pitch on the way from Gannon, that's just going to clip in for strike number two. It's so and two the count now with one out. Gannon will, in his potential last inning of play, 0 oh and two with one out. The pitch, swing, and it's going to get away as the throw on over to second to potentially get two, and he's out. And that is how this setting will come to an end on the double play. Down goes McIntyre swinging on strikes. And then because of that, on over Greeno will get tagged out. And the inning will come to an end just like that. And with it, we will go to the bottom of the sixth inning. What can the Bulldogs do to get out of this ending unscathed? We'll have to figure that answer out. We can come back here, FM 98.1 and 1410. And of course, as always, video live streaming NorthPlatPost.com. The DNN Event Center wishes everyone a great sports season. With North Platte and Nebraska weather, things change quickly and can make our lives a little more difficult. Thank goodness for the DNN. The DNN offers hourly rentals for all types of sports practices, including turf, courts, batting cages, and equipment usage. Call the DNN Event Center to schedule your team's practice times and for more league information for all sports seasons. For over 30 years in our community, for your next event, the DNN Event Center. Are you in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV? Look no further than Bill Summers Ford Honda Nissan Lincoln for your next vehicle. Look online 24-7 at BillSummers.com. Bill Summers is Western Nebraska's leasing headquarters, and they have aggressive financing to get you into the vehicle you've been dreaming of. Check out all the inventory at BillSummers.com anytime. Bill Summers Ford Honda Nissan Lincoln, where families are our business. Highway 83 at Walker Road in North Platte, and online 24-7 at BillSummers.com. to Grand Island, North Platte High School. Currently at the moment, trailing Grand Island and the Islanders in this one, 7-2 to two with still on the mound for North Platte High School. Race Morky. Ian Aarons will be up to bat. He's 0 for 3 today. Also, thank you to our half inning sponsor here for today's game, Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. Here on this potential last half inning for Grand Island and the Islanders, the Bulldogs would love to get out of this inning in a quick 1-2-3 fashion. And let me see, in the 0-3, Aaron's up first. Also, thank you to our sponsors here for today's game day. Place pizza and wings. Find out more. 1510 East 4th Street for all their daily specials, wings and more. Again, their most prominent one that we all love so much, the 10 for $10 wings on Tuesday. Have been there in a bit, but would love to go back again. As first pitch from Morky to Aaron's is outside for ball number one. 
And the Bulldogs would love to avoid using another arm here. The game again tomorrow as Morky will step off and take a breather and reevaluate. One ball, no strikes into Aaron's from Morky. The pitch. That one high and away. Ball number two, two and oh, the count now. Two and oh. Nobody on, nobody out in the bottom of the six. Morky fires. That one around the knees, but just below it, ball three. It's three and oh, the count now to Aaron's. As Morky now with a 3 0 count will look to make at least one strike get in the pitch. That one's going to be in there. Strike number one. Once again, painting that outside part of the zone. This one fell in. Can he get another one? It's 3 and 1 with nobody out. Here comes the pitch in the errands. It can do. And there's strike number two. Good bounce backs from Race Morky. After. Falling behind 3-0, he's now picking it back up. It's 3-2 and two now. So here comes that payoff pitch on the way. And it's outside ball four. And off to first goes Aaron's. And now here comes Gabe Ruiz. One for one today. Walked in his first plate appearance. Doubled into right field on the second. And was hit by a pitch in his third off the back of his head. And now with one runner on it, first being Aaron's. What damage can he cause? But hopefully he results the damage to his own team as he grounds into a double play. That is what we all want and hope. As Orky will stare deeply down and get the sign he likes. As here comes his first pitch into Gabe Ruiz. Nice off speed. Oh, it's just too low. Ball number one. Oi, oi, poor Morky here in this. First two batters he's seen just on the edge of getting into the zone, but not enough. It's one to know the count. So here comes the next pitch from Morky. That one smashed out to center field. Jonathan going back. He's going to get to the fence line, and that most certainly will at least bring one run home as the throw. Ooh, well, not actually, as that's another double for Gabe Ruiz. And it puts both runners in scoring position for Grand Island. There it's now two runners in scoring position. Aaron's at third, Ruiz at second, and here comes Jack Stenson up to bat. One for three here today. Grounded out in his first two plate appearances, but tripled over the head of Tyler Townsend in right. And now looking to bring both runs home for Grand Island. Seven runs on nine hits now for the Islanders in this game, too. As Morgan's pitch is high upstairs. Ball number one. It's one to know the count now. One to know. Two runners on. Nobody out. Pitch. That one grounded. Up to Easton Jones. Can he get the tag? And they're going to say that he is out at third base. Great play from Easton Jones. Even though Stenson will reach on the fielder's choice. Easton Jones with a beautiful tag out at third. Now gets one out here in this bottom of the six and have only one runner in scoring position, Ruiz. At second is here comes Zenon Sack. He's two for three today. With a ground out, a double, and a single. The pitch. High in the sky, a little upstairs, and want to know the count. As it's one to know with one out for designated hitter Sack. He's got Ruiz at second and Stenson at first. Whoa! That's going to bounce off the head of Zenon Sack, and with that, on over to first he goes, and now the bases are loaded. For Jacob Albers, he's 0 for 1, hit by a pitch, walk and fly out as time's going to be called and out comes head coach. As out comes head coach Ricky Holm to talk with Dean McIntyre and I, well, I'm actually talking with the entire defense as out comes the well played official. 
Now we're going to have a talk with Coach Holm. And bases are loaded here in this bottom of the sixth inning. So I think this is the second time they've going to use the mound visit on Race Morky. And this could be discussed because the Bulldogs might potentially not have an arm, even though they secretly do in, in Caden Jonason, but I don't think Coach wants to say that. So after that discussion, they'll now go back to their position is, again, I don't know if Coach would have... If Coach didn't want to talk to them about he didn't have any arms, that's a flat-out lie. He has two arms still available, and Jack Polk and Caden Jonason out in center. The bases, though, are loaded for Jacob Albers, who's up to bat. And his bottom of the sixth. That ball is just a bit too high above the letters for ball number one. 7-2 Seven game. Seven runs, nine hits, one error for Grand Island. Two runs, four hits, no errors. The Bulldogs, as the 1-0 delivers. Yeah, make that now 2-0 the count. Bases loaded situation. Ruiz at third, Stenson at second, Sack at first. The pitch, swing, and a miss there from Albers. Can Morkey get the second out of this inning here? With the bases loaded. That one going to be fouled off the bat of Albers. So we'll play the umpires out of balls. and gets a new fresh one over to Morkey. Still with the bases loaded. Morkey gets a sign he likes from McIntyre. Now we'll get ready. Shake off a couple more. Changes his mind. Now he gets a good one. Here comes the pitch. Oh, that off speed is up into the zone. As here comes Morky's payoff pitch. Check swing. And now it's three and two the count. So Morky gets it full. A walk will bring a run home here. And the bases are once again loaded here today. The pitch for Morky. That one slowly grounded into his glove. The throw to first, and they'll get the double play. Woo, finally some luck goes the way of North Plant High School. They get out of this inning unscathed, and now they're heading to the top of the seventh with their last opportunity to get some runs across. And can they do it? We'll have to see. We can come back here, FM 981, AM 1410, and of course, video live streaming as always, NorthPlatPost.com. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch, Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics? Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Find me, Brent Rogo, at 502 East Francis. Free PC and Mac checkups at CT Computer Services in North Platte? That's right. Let CT Computer Services diagnose your systems to ensure your hardware integrity, security, and overall PC Mac health are running as they should. For a free PC Mac checkup, stop in at 905 South Willow in North Platte or call 308-534-3628. CT Computer Services, your IT guys since 2005. Welcome back here, everybody, to Ryder Park. It's the top of the seventh inning and the last inning of play here, potentially for North Platte High School's offense as they trail 7-2. to two. 
And this time for the seventh, again, our half inning break is brought to you in part by Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. Check out Kevin McGann and the Fortify Group. His location, 621 South Dewey, Sweet B. Still on the mound for the Islanders, Gage Gannon. As his first pitch into Yonkers is there, strike number one. Yonkers doubled in his lone plate appearance last time out. Can he do it again here? Whoa, that one's close to the head of Yonkers there, but he dodges it. Ball number one, one and one the count now. Following Yonkers, Race Morky and then Tyler Townsend. It's now... Here he comes, a 1-1. One, one. It's down low. Ball two to Jordan Yonkers. As Gage Gannon now gets ready and he'll fire away his 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss from Yonkers there for strike number one. Gannon's got the speed, so you got to be on top of those swings. That time a little behind. It's 2-2 two and two with nobody out in this top of the seventh inning. Gannon. Delivers the 2-2. Two -two. Way, that one's tight in. I'm going to say it didn't hit Yonkers as that's ball three. It's three and two the count. That was mighty close to it, but you say it won't happen. And now here we go, Yonkers. With a 3-2 count against Gage Gannon. Just don't swing. Here comes. 3-2 pitch. There's ball number four. And with that, a walk to lead off this top of the seventh inning to bring out up Race Morky. 0 for 2 today again. Didn't step on the bag in his first at bat at first, which caused an a, a inning ending out. And then reached on a fielder's choice in his second. As now he's facing Gage Gannon for the first time. Tyler Townsend on deck with Ty Hanneborg in the hole. As Gannon will get the sign from Verplank and get ready and fire away. That's down low. Ball number one to Morkey. Seven two lead for Grand Island. Seven runs, nine hits, one error for the Islanders. Two runs, four hits, no errors for North Plant. Check swing from Morkey, but doesn't matter. It's in there anyway. Strike number one. One and one the count now. However, at first is Jordan Yonkers for North Plant. As the pitch in from Gannon. Swing and a miss from Morky there for strike number two. One and two the count now. To the left fielder on deck. Tyler Townsend with Ty Hanneborg in the hole for the Bulldogs. As Gannon will step back on the mound. Get ready to rock and roll. Glances on over at first to Yonkers. The one-two pitch to Morky. Way outside, ball two. Good patience from Morky, even though he's behind in the count. Identified it was a ball and was able to not swing. Two and two now with nobody out. One runner on, top of the seventh. Last opportunity for the Bulldogs. Two, two. Popped up, drifting on over to right field underneath it. Gets Stenson, and he gloves it for out number one. So pop fly out from Race Morky, and there's first down of this inning for North Platte High School. Here comes Tyler Townsend. He's 0 for 2 with two flyouts in the infield. Oh, actually, correction, we're going to have a pinch hitter coming in here for North Platte. It's going to be Jackson Peters for the Bulldogs, seeing his first swing today. Freshman with an oppor huge opportunity here to keep this inning alive with Yonkers at first. Gets a very good pitcher, though, in Gannon. The pitch. Yeah, ooh, in there, strike number one on the upper echelon of the plate. Oh, and won the count now. Again, gets a sign from Verplank and delivers his 0-1 pitch. That's going to sneak in on the lower half of the plate for strike number two. 0-2 oh, two now to Peters. <coughs> As... Another click glance at first. Here comes the pitch from Gannon. On the way, the 0-2. Oh, that's outside ball number one. Tried to go back to that fastball, but lost control of it. One and two with one out here. 
7-2 the lead for the Islanders. Got all five runs. At the bottom of the fifth inning that pushed the lead up. Here comes the 1-2. That's once again low and away. There's ball two. Good patience from Peters. Not swinging on a pitch outside the zone. Gannon, once more, glance at first. 2-2 two, two the count. Here it comes on the way. It's right down the middle there for strike three as down goes Jackson Peters looking. And there's now two outs here in this top of the seventh. And here comes the last batter for North Platte High School, probably potentially today. As it's Ty Hanneborg up to bat. He's got Yonkers at first. He's one for two today. Flew out in his first plate appearance to left field, but singled into left field in his last plate appearance. Now a 7-2 lead. Seven runs, nine hits, one error for Grand Island. Two runs on four hits, no errors for North Platte High School. As Gannon fires. That pitch is going to sneak in, strike one to Hanneborg. If we get past Ty Hanneborg, it's Caden Jonason and then Jackson Polk for the Bulldogs. So it's 9-1-2 and two right now. As Gannon steps and fires. That's high upstairs. Ball number one to Hanneborg. Hanneborg once again at second base today defensively. In both the games. One and one with two outs here. Gage Gannon, deep breath and delivers his 1-1. That one squared up and skied into right. On comes Stenson, and he gloves it. And the game is officially over. North Platte High School came into today needing two wins or at least a split with Grand Island at a shot of potentially keeping the district, hosting a district alive. Unfortunately, they couldn't do so as they fall in both games. 22-0 in game one and 7-2 here in game number two. We're going to step aside and we're going to take a real quick break when we come back here to Ryder Park. Quick stop post-game show right here at FM 98.1 and AM 1410. As always, live streaming or plantpost.com. Where do you go for wings? Dave's Place. Where do you go for pizza? Dave's Place. What about cold drinks, a family atmosphere, and nightly specials? Dave's Place. Hmm, sounds like a sweep for Dave's Place. Pizza made from fresh dough, drink deals, and yes, the best pizza and wings. It's Dave's Place. Dave's Place on East 4th Street or at davesplacenp.com. Order it. Carry out. Door dash. Dave's Place. Whoop, whoop. Great Plains Health Orthopedics in North Platte is ready to serve you with board-certified orthopedic surgeons and a team of medical professionals who specialize in hip, knee, and shoulder joint replacements and revisions, minor to complex hand injuries, sports medicine for both the serious athlete and the weekend warrior, new and innovative, operative, and non-operative procedures, and work-related injuries. Same week appointments are available. Call Great Plains Health Orthopedics today. Your health is our mission. Great Plains Health. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch, Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics? Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. See me, Pete Foltz, at 501 South Jeffers for a free insurance review. Are you ready to embark on an exciting new career? Larry's Glass has been a trusted name in custom glass design for over 40 years, and they are seeking a skilled glazier to join their team. If you have a passion for precision and craftsmanship, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Install glass in commercial, residential, and auto settings. Get paid while you train for a new career. Stop into Larry's Glass at 211 West 5th Street, North Platte, and discuss how you can be part of their team and build a fulfilling career. With Sandhill State Bank's new upgraded cart management experience, you can now control your carts anytime, anywhere. The new features and added control allow you to prevent fraud like never before. Get increased transaction details, turn your cart on and off whenever you'd like, and report your card lost in an instant, all from our mobile app. More insights, more control, and more security for your banking experience. Bank local and go far with digital banking solutions that go wherever you go. Visit SandhillState.com to learn more. Sandhill State Bank, member FDIC. 
The North Platte Public Schools prepares all students to be productive, responsible citizens in a safe, caring, supporting learning environment with caring staff, engaging curriculum, clean facilities, and updated technology. You can rely on our schools giving your child the tools they need for a successful future. For more information, including enrollment and career opportunities, visit nppsd.org. North Platte Public Schools. Communicate. Connect. Commit. Welcome back here to Ryder Park in what has been a tough day for North Platte High School and the Bulldogs as they fall here to Grand Island and the Islanders in game number two of this doubleheader. This time, not as bad as game number one, seven to two. I mean, of course, after the first game where you fall 22 to nothing, it's a question of how will the team respond in game number two because there's so many different avenues that could have been taken by the Bulldogs in this game. Do they, you know, do they roll over in, in this second game knowing, you know, how tough it was in, in game number one? Or do they... They put up the fight and continue to show why they're a team that is trying to trend towards a potential berth to a state championship. And they showed up much better here in game number two. Specifically, Landon Greeno came up with a, a fantastic performance as they do because he gave away, I think, only two runs in his entire time here for the Bulldogs. As I'll be having a special guest. It's going to be in a, it's been a while since I've had this special guest here up here for us in the area of... This time, North Platte High School, as you normally know him as the head coach for the Legion squad, it's uh, head coach Ricky Holm joins me here. Coach, um, not probably the weekend you were hoping for overall, as, as first game pretty much was a, you know, take it up and just throw it out the window type of performance. Uh, nothing seemed to have been going your way in that game, number one, whether it be on the arms or in the batter's box, and, you know, you fell 22 nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of with where we're at in our schedule, uh, looking to get at least one win this weekend between the two today and one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So uh, got was able to get Jones out in 29 pitches so he can come back tomorrow if need be. Uh, just kind of snowballed there, but was able to get some guys some innings that don't normally get innings, and mm -hmm. later on in the season that's going to pay off. Yeah, and that it does. And, of course, we talked last week with Coach Byrne about the importance of having that deep rotation and, then the, and how some guys you know haven't really been used that you normally would see get utilized. So got to see some endings there. But I think game number two, much better performance and even in even tougher situations because you had limited arms you had to go through. And Landon Green, old reliable is how I described him out there. Could do anything, came out and put up a really strong performance again against a, a, a great Grand Island team. Yeah, I mean, I told him it was the best 77 pitches, three and a third I've ever seen. <laughs> so um, he was effectively wild, but was able to dump those curveballs in and hitters mm -hmm. count and uh, to kind of take some at-bats away from guys. So I was really proud with the way he pitched. I mean, he'd been throwing up zeros all year, so he had kind of earned uh, that start today. So uh, as we move deeper and deeper into the season, I mean, him along with Race, I mean, those are guys that we're going to lean on as, as well as Easton Jones and Jack mm -hmm. Polk and those guys. So yep. uh, definitely got some deep pitching. Uh, obviously would have liked to have came out of here with <laughs> at least a split, but after losing the first game 22 nothing, to kind of be right there in the end with it, uh, you know, at least we got a little bit momentum that we could take into tomorrow. Yep, and that's that's the real kicker, you know. And I think what what made the big difference in the early portions of this first game was just uh, just just how the, the ground balls seemed to come much easier in that one. The 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 first the first game, you know, you always talked about during the Legion schedule. You always the Legion season, you always want to keep a ball in play for the defense to make a play, and it just seemed like no matter what was thrown, it was always going to get out of the defense's reach or out of them making a play. But here with Greeno, he was able to create opportunities for the defense to make plays, and, and, and you, you guys sure did. Only giving up, I think, a grand total of just two errors here in, in, in this two-game span. Yeah, today our mistakes were more mental than physical, which is, you know, f more frustrating as a coach for me and Coach Byrne. Um, just little things. I mean, some of the younger guys just being in situations or seeing pitches like – you know, JV came here after playing two games and wanted to get Jackson Peters in a bat just to kind of a controlled throw him in the deep end kind of situation and didn't take the bat off his shoulder. I was kind of giving him a hard time, but I was like, hey, <laughs> I was like, hey, is that the fastest pitch you've ever seen? And he said, yes, you know, so um, even though we didn't necessarily get the outcome that we wanted, just the kind of experience and getting our toes wet with some of these guys as we move forward into the end of this season and playoffs and for years.
all it's going to do is help them. Yep, and it's the same. First, the first official games of Class A ball that that your team has played has got a lot of the you know, a lot of the young guys on the varsity squad have never seen somebody from Class A throw such heat. And you know, even though maybe in the in the score column and they didn't get much done, I think that learning experience is something viable. And you know, quick turnaround tomorrow, probably a little quicker than you'd like, as you go to Carney for a noon game, just one game against uh, again a prominent Carney squad that you've seen for and the in the Legion system for for many 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 years you know how much of a of a benefit is it to know that a good chunk of those guys of course you'll see not just in May but you've seen earlier throughout the years to make sure you're prepped and ready with a quick turnaround like today yeah I mean as as far as majority of these guys on varsity we're still kind of bitter about them no hitting us in districts <laughs> yes, um, yes. I don't know if we've gotten over that <laughs> got to think too that uh, coach Archer retired so they got yep. uh, coach Conant in now so <laughs> I mean, you, you imagine it's going to look somewhat similar, but, uh, you know, they had a few guys graduate last year and then a new coach. So either way, whoever's running it, whoever's playing it, we know that they're a quality program and it's a team that you got to get ready for. So, uh, I mean, they got Jack Polk, they got Easton Jones, they got to go through tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like those guys against any team in the state. So, But also knowing that if we don't play our game, that they're a team that can humble us. So yep. got to come in ready to play. Uh, I was telling them today, you know, more so being focused than hyped. Um, and kind of controlling that heart rate. And I said, at the end of the game, if it goes our way and you want to beat on your chest, okay, you could do that. But until then, let's try to control our heart rate. So a little bit of momentum, hopefully, to build on after this second game here uh, would be a big win to get a, a win versus a class, kind mm -hmm. of with where we're sitting with the PowerPoints now. So uh, going to give it our all tomorrow and throw the kid in sink at him, and hopefully it'll work out. Absolutely love to hear. Well, you already hit on a couple of things you want to improve on, but what's that one big thing that you're going to take home today on the bus and, and for tomorrow to make sure that you do come away with that one win this weekend to help with those power projection points? Yeah, I'm going to say two things. It's going to be pitch efficiency from the pitchers. Second game was a little better, but I think the first game we had like 15 walks or something. <laughs> yep. um, and so pitch efficiency and then just pre-pitch setup. But, you know, I was talking with Connor Stifler today. There was a couple plays where you could tell as the ball was hit to him, he was thinking about what to do as it was coming to him, you know. And I said, this game is moving fast. It's a lot easier if you're thinking about that stuff beforehand. So just overall as a team, pre-pitch set up and kind of think, knowing what we're doing with the baseball, if it goes to my right, if it goes to my left, um, it just makes the game so much easier once the ball gets put in play. So, yeah, just uh, being ready for whatever's going to come our way and, you know, throwing strikes and giving our defense a chance. <laughs> That's you hope to see you tomorrow, Coach. Thank you so much once again for stopping on by. I'll see you bright and early at noon to take on Carnew. And yes, that sir. Was Thank you. Head well, I'll say head coach. That was I, I get so used to it at this point. You know, it just feels. I know, I know. Another month away, and he'll move on to the head coach for for the FNBO Nationals. But assistant coach Ricky Holm there joins me as Bulldogs do fall in both their games here against Grand Island, twenty-two nothing in game number one, but a very strong bounce back game number two, where they do fall the Islanders though totality wise seven two in this one. Well, that's going to do it for me here today. I'm going to step aside and I'll see you all bright and early tomorrow at noon for North Platte taking on Carney. I'll see you all right then when I see you at Memorial Park. Hopefully get to see some of you out there. I always love seeing some of the parents and some old faces that I see in the baseball world. But I'll see you all tomorrow for more sports right here at FM 981 and AM 1410.